Good evening, everybody. My name is Cameron, and welcome back to the bar. I just noticed there's a little picture of myself up in the corner, and that's because I did a little configuration wrong on my screen, and that's totally, totally on me. And I will fix this in the hottest of seconds. Oh my goodness. I need a closer look at my screen because I don't have my, I don't have my glasses on. What's the thing? What's the button? Button is, this guy, then we do that, and now everything is okay. I figured it out. Well, I was planning on easing into that little teaser there, um, but uh, I have now just spoiled for everybody that uh, there's a new camera angle on stream, which is pretty cool. I got this little phone hooked up. It's a little boom arm connected to the computer. Now we got another com completely different camera angle. Look at that. That's cool. There's quite a bit of a delay there. And uh, I was playing around with things before stream and evidently kind of screwed things up a little bit. But that's okay. We like to like push forward with things at this bar. We don't necessarily, uh, I think a, a wise person once said, or perhaps a lizard man said, move fast and break shit. I like that. Anyways, um, so tonight's bar theme um, may not be very obvious, um, but if you are able to read, it might be Mezcal plus Tequil. Um, if I'm not blocking the A, which I, I can, I kind of am blocking the A. I was looking through my bar the other day, and I realized that for the most part, tequila, or mostly the agave spirits that I have access to, are rather underutilized. I'm like, I don't know. I'm just not too much of a tequila drinker myself. Uh, I do know how to use tequila to make some really nice cocktails, like mar the margarita, like the mockingbird, and like yeah, at least a few more cocktails that we're going to get into today, as well as things that, or as well as cocktails that utilize mezcal, which is another another agave-based spirit. Um, technically, the first one. Um, I'm also I was also thinking too. We've got another stream that's coming up uh, where we're going to kind of do some spicy cocktails and whatnot. And I was also thinking like, what do I think of when I think of spicy? When I think of spicy, Spicy, I think of peppers. When I think of peppers, I think of jalapenos. When I think of jalapenos, I think of Mexico. When I think of Mexico, I think of tequila and mezcal. Specifically tequila, I guess, because like Oaxaca, because uh, I believe, if I'm correct in saying, tequila must be made in Oaxaca. Um, in any case, I do have a book here that is a lot smarter than I am. It provides a lot more context on it. It is called Mezcal Plus Tequila Cocktails Mixed Drinks for the Golden Age of Agave by Robert Simonson, which I have more or less been using as my kind of standard on mezcal and tequila. Um, so I'm planning on kind of jumping straight into that. Um, I see that Two Step has just popped up there. What's up, G? What's going on? I noticed that the chat message didn't actually show up on my screen here. Which is interesting. Is that potentially another technical difficulty? Test? Test? Where's my chat messages? Streamlabs? Streamlabs, are you being weird on me? That's kind of interesting. Let me see if I can fix that. I don't know all the technical difficulties today. Where's my alert box? I know there's an alert box. Where are you? It should be you. Why are you? Hmm. One second. I'm going to go closer to my computer again because I'm not wearing glasses. I want to make sure everybody can see what's being said over there. What do I see? What do I see? I see that there is supposed to be Twitch chat and it's just not working. H. Interesting. My Twitch chat is not showing up on my screen today. This is weird. Tell me happy birthday in the most sexiest voice you can. Oh my goodness. Well, for the sexiest voice, I'm going to have to... One second. It's going to be weird for a moment, but I have a special can I have a special microphone back here. Hi there. Happy birthday, big boy. Anyway, back in bar scene. I cannot believe there's so much weird stuff going on. Hmm. What if I do this one and I test the chat? Oh, now chat is showing up. That was really awkward. All right. We fixed it. Things are good. Things are good. Things are good. I think. This is what I was talking about earlier about moving fast and breaking shit. See, now things are working up. Lol. Hey, there we go. Finally. Anyways, so uh, that's two technical difficulties so far. We don't usually have those around here, so hopefully the fact that they occurred literally within the first like minute or so of the stream means that we weren't going to encounter any more. However, I know it's very rainy outside, and if a power outage does occur, I will be using my data and we will be we will be drinking. There will be alcohol, even if I don't have internet or a powered up computer. Um, in any case, but yes, is it your birthday today, Mr. Two-Step? Because if it is, 
we celebrate those things around here. Still workshopping a proper um, branded with an X birthday song. Uh, we haven't quite figured it out yet. But in any case, so the topic today is mezcal plus tequila. Mezcal plus tequila equals happiness. It's a formula that is very, very well known. And what I want to do, kind of like what we did last week with Fernet Branca, is to kind of make ourselves a little bit of a cocktail, something a little easy, something that we can kind of sip on as we dive into the history a little bit of tequila and mezcal, mostly because I don't think I know enough about spirits in general. I assume that most of the world take advantage of the beautiful libations that are placed in front of them, mixed in front of them, shaken in front of them. Um, stirred in front of them, served in general. And so we dive into that. It won't be too, too long. I don't, this is, this book isn't as big a lexicon as I guess the book that I pulled out last week. And according to at least the front page or the, what is it? The chapter roster, it says that there is a brief primer on mezcal and tequila. I spilled the story. It's like th for like four and a half pages. I'm not reading all four and a half pages. I want to get to the cocktails. However, the first thing I want to start out with is, again, what I was mentioning earlier was that there's going to be like a spicy cocktail stream that we're planning in the works, and that's going to be next week. And I need to do a l quick little preparation for that, uh, which I felt, thought was um, kind of related to mezcal and tequila, specifically because of peppers and stuff. Not that that's necessarily specifically related because they're agave based spirits, they have absolutely nothing to do with peppers, but I've seen recipes from jalapeno margarita out there, and they do in fact use tequila. And what else uses in tequila? Well, tequila, duh. Oh my God, I actually don't have that much tequila. Wow, well that's interesting. Apparently, it's not a technical difficulty, but I don't have a lot of Blanco tequila. There's more though. I'm hot, says Two Step. Ah, as fuck, bro. Lol. That's okay. I'm always kind of cold. But I got my pants on for that very reason. They got the heat on kill. Dude. Hopefully we ain't dying out there. In any case, I say I say tequila. Let's just let's just dive into it. I only have I don't have a lot of the Blanco tequila, which is the which is the tequila that is white. It hasn't been aged for very long, if at all, in oak barrels or other barrels of the sort. We have Reposado tequilas, which are, have been aged a bit longer. I don't know what the actual laws are there. And there's a level above that. And there's also, I think, tequila cristalinos, which I believe have also been aged. Um, but I guess somehow the color has been taken out. Or I might be getting myself confused. I hope not. And I also have some mezcal here. So what I want to do is I want to take one of these tequilas and I want to put some chopped up jalapenos on the inside. Uh, excuse me. And I'm going to let that sit. I think the recommendation is like an hour or two, but things are going to get spicy. So I'm just going to straight up leave a couple of chopped up jalapeno peppers uh, in tequila for a straight up week and then see what pops up the other side. Or maybe like an hour or so and we use it in a cocktail later on. Maybe. I don't know. Don't spoil the story. Two steps. Oh, oh there was a they got the heat on kill. Yeah, I, I love dude. I think it's perpetually. I keep my temperature at 72 degrees in this apartment, always, all the time, maybe even higher. Even with 72 degrees, I have to wear like a jacket. Um, but when you've got the, like the limelight and stuff on you, like it's, it gets a little bit hotter, to be honest. So I'm gonna pick one of these tequilas at random. This is mezcal, so it's not tequila. There's, there's a distinction there that we will soon get into. And the other one will be at random. Um, it's not gonna be this one. It's gonna be the expensive one, the Patron. It wasn't at random. I picked the most expensive thing that was on the table. Um, technically, I guess that would be my surface here, but I have absolutely no respect for that piece of my time. So um, I'm not even gonna acknowledge its existence. This thing doesn't exist. Just, just don't worry about it. I have no respect for this piece of electronic. So I'm gonna take some tequila. I'm gonna take some jalapeno peppers. I'm gonna give them a little bit of a slice. And then I'm going to put them in together in preparation too for that, because I really, I'm really, really excited about it. And I want to tease it. I'm going to pull this little thing that I have conveniently hidden off screen over here a little bit. I'm going to play around with it with our hot for a hot second. And then we're going to utilize it because if I'm going to be chopping up peppers, the first time I chop up some peppers over, and I mean, not the first time it better look damn pretty. And why would it look damn pretty? Well, I'll answer that in a second. If there's no technical difficulties, which there is not. Hi there, everybody. This is my torso. This is a phone that is currently use, being used as another camera angle. It is not perfect, uh, but nobody is. Um, but it gives us a view, a new view of the bar, which I've never had set up before. I noticed that the refresh rate on here is absolutely crazy. Uh, and I don't know why it's doing this artifacting thing. So uh, I probably won't utilize it very, very much except for like stills and stuff, but this is just my way of teasing it. We are working out the kinks. It is 
<laughs> it's doing some really, really funny things there. Um, but so long as everything sounds okay and that we can still like dance all we want to up in the corner over here, then I think everything's gonna be okay. So how do you cut a jalapeno pepper? Actually, it's really simple. You kind of um, get yourself a cutting board, get yourself some jalapenos, um, as they are sometimes called. Just kind of give them a bit of a slice. I'm gonna grab a spare container that I have down here, and I'm more or less going to fill the whole thing. I'm gonna drop a couple of these jalapeno peppers, slices, on the inside of it, and then put the tequila there. And I'm just gonna kind of leave it to the side. Not gonna worry about that. Um, evidently, because of all the stuttering and whatnot I hear, see here, there's gonna need to be some configuration for um for everything that happens later on now an important thing to note here because i have made this mistake before is that if you are going to cut spicy hot peppers you want to make sure that you wash your hands afterwards or just like make sure you don't get it just like don't touch your eyes don't touch like any open orifices on your body because you could very well like make yourself blind or like send yourself to the hospital and that would be terrible i personally have never gone to the hospital for pepper burns um however uh, there have been some pretty sick burns give it to me in my life by individuals out there who may or may not be named pepper pretty sick burns indeed never hospital inducing Luckily, luckily for me at least. Otherwise, things would be sad. Now I'm gonna take all, except for like, maybe like a couple of these, and I'm going to put them into this container. Uh, I'll probably just slide them into the container. I wanna make sure that there is as little connection between my fingers and what goes on as possible. Cause I, in other words, like I, I am the kind of person who like, I'm very tempted to like, like, touch my face and stuff like that which is why i've got a little bit of a blemish this stream i'm not looking perfectly pretty today um but you know what again just like we saw earlier nobody's perfect we've just we've just got to work with that nobody's perfect i gotta work it some would say it's the imperfections of the pepper that cause the spiciness. There are some claims that it's the seeds on the inside that provide, that are the main source of the spice. I have literally no idea if that's in any truth or not. Oh, actually, well, let's see. This piece here does not have any seeds in it, and I'm going to take a bite of the jalapeno. Yeah, it's hot. I don't know what people are talking about. It's spicy. Spicy, spicy, spicy. I'm going to take these little nubs over here. Do not need them. We'll put them into our bucket which has now become the spicy bucket at least for the time being and i will take all of them except for one two i will put those off to the side for later put them on top of the cap for now and i'll take the rest of them and place them into this container we'll do a little bit of a, a little bit of a do this carefully do this carefully we get a nice angle on that cameron can we if we move it back a little bit i still have to get used to this whole angle even being here so uh if it seems like i kind of don't know what i'm doing to be perfectly honest i never know what i'm doing to be perfectly honest that's why i read books and stuff and use other resources as my reference although sometimes i make a cocktail or two on my own is it because i know what i'm doing no it's just because i'm confident confidence is key the more that you do things confidently the more people think you know what you're doing and so long as you just kind of let them let them believe that i don't think it's dishonest it's like it's like performance it's all about performance. I, I, I used to do a lot of performance and stuff. It's just totally not unusual at all. If there is any sort of spicy value in the seeds, we will utilize it. And I will put them into the container as well. Obviously, before you use this, um, the recommendation would probably be to strain it, I would assume. Now, I'll take these other pieces. They will come up again later. So, I'll put them to the side. Oh, wait a minute. I had the other two pieces over here already. So, I actually don't need those. Boop, boop. There we go. With a nicely cleaned cutting board and a very spicy knife, we will put that off to the side. And I will take these two, put them off to the side as well, and hopefully, hopefully, crossing my fingers, not forget about them. Now all we need to do is fill it up with our favorite tequila. There might be some ratios here that I'm just not paying attention to, um, but this tequila gets very rarely used. It's my mother's favorite tequila. It's Patron. People, she loves, she loves her Patron. Mama loves her Patron. That she do. I'm just going to kind of fill that up all the way to the top. I'm going to seal it. And um, what happens to this liquor bottle is uh, is beyond me. And I will tuck it, tuck it away for another point in time. This was jalapeno infused tequila. It wasn't that exciting. Not yet at least. But it's getting more excited the longer it stays in there. 
and I'll put that down with my tequila. Um, it's interesting. The way that I have my bar kind of um, organized back here is that I have sections for tequila. There's a section for, it's like, it's trying to be sorted by base spirit, but I also have a section that's sorted specifically by like, like um, flavors. For example, there's one that's more like spicy botanical flavors. There's stuff that's more fruity flavors. There's stuff that's more, um, I guess, things that don't fall into that category, like like coffee or nut or otherwise. I mean, like the edible nut. I don't have any nut flavored liqueurs in terms of bodily fluids. If there, if it exists out there, oh, you know what? If it's got sugar in it, it can be fermented, and I'm sure somebody's done it. I'm not that curious though. Not right now, at least. Um, but I'm starting to realize, like, getting into the world of infusions, like, what we just did, did there is basically an infusion. You take something, and you put it into alcohol, and you let it sit there for a while, and something about what you put on the inside is going to kind of coalesce and become a part of whatever you just put the thing in. And that's kind of cool. But then it's got me thinking, the, the piece of that that prevented me from wanting to try it was that I would have, like, absolutely no way of organizing. I was like, well, what am I going to do? Like, do I take jalapeno spiced tequila and keep it with the tequilas because it's the base spirit now or do we move it over with the spicy stuff where i have let's say ancho chili liqueur which is spicy what do i do about that honestly it's an open question and it does not need to be answered it's just whatever works well for me for now it's just gonna stay with the tequila yo that's my mother out there i was just saying how she loves patron because i just put some patron with some jalapenos mother question for you if i gave you jalapeno infused patron tequila do you think you'd like it? Also, heyo to the parents in chat. We love you. We always do. Um, anyways, we move on. Specifically, if you, if you recall, Mother, just because I know that you're there now, this is the same bottle of tequila that you left with me. So, not really into the spicy. I'm not really into the sour. It seems kind of on opposite sides of the spectrum there. I just noticed one of my lights is off. I'm going to be anal about it today. I'm going to fix my light. Because I remember, while I was setting up my other camera angle, I bumped it. There we go. There we go. That'll probably work. Oh, goodness gracious. I'm all over the place today. Oh, now, doesn't that look beautiful? Wow. Look at that shadow that I'm casting on the tequila thing now. Maybe it needs to be down a little bit. That's okay. Previously, I would be worried about the mishaps and stuff that happen on stream or how long it takes me to make a cocktail And now I'm just like, you know what? Whatever. We can do whatever we want here. Let's not feel so self-conscious about the weird things that happen We're not professionals here We are all enthusiasts. Unless we are professionals, in which case if there are professionals out there who know what the hell they're doing Confidently and all the time let us pick your brain about it. I want to know you what you knows. Dad says hi. Hi, father. Hi, fam. We were just talking last uh, on Monday about how family pop on every once in a while, and that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. So, mezcal and tequila. I need something to drink before I actually like do mezcal and tequila stuff. So I'm gonna make a relatively simple tequila cocktail. Um, that I'm gonna search up right now because. I want to. Um, it's not a recipe that I'm featuring. It's just, just going to be uh, something that I mix up. Not necessarily correctly either. It's called the Mockingbird. I just like the Mockingbird. It's a tequila cocktail. It uses tequila, creme de menthe, and some lime juice, which I happen to have. I'm just going to mix them together. I'm not going to do anything fancy with it. Just want something to sip on. Something to something to wet the gullet as we uh, as we dive into a little bit of the history of mezcal and tequila. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some lime juice from my fridge. Um, I can say it's from my fridge, not because I bought it or anything like that, but because it's frozen lime juice. It's still fresh. It was just frozen. It was just unthawed today. And uh, I'm trying not to waste things around here, so this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to use my Reposado tequila, the Patron. Uh, it's going to be the star of the show this evening, probably. And I got some creme de menthe down here somewhere. Actually, I'm going to do something a little bit different. I have this mojito liqueur. And it's supposed to be, it's mojito, so it's mint, and it's a little bit limey, and I actually kind of want to see what all of these taste like together. I've never made a Mockingbird for myself with Reposado tequila. Uh, I've never made it with this particular mojito liqueur. I've always used like a creme de menthe, um, but that's what it's all about. And you mix that in a ratio of, let's say it's like, it's three to one to two of the tequila, the creme de menthe, and the lime juice. That's one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of tequila, half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of the, of the creme de menthe or your mint liqueur, and then an ounce or about 30 milliliters of lime juice, whatever you've got. It can be fresh, it can be de-thawed, it can be stuff bought by the store, who cares? Whatever you want it to be. It's supposed to be shaken. Um, however, I'm just not gonna shake it because I'm lazy this time around. 
And it's not supposed to be the focus of this cocktail tonight anyways. We'll move on with something else. I'm gonna grab this guy. It's a, it's a glass. I'm gonna grab a couple of, uh, probably just one big cube, the easiest thing to do. I'm gonna stir it, I guess. If I got a cube in there, I might as well stir it. Just something to wet the gullet. Cube, cube. I don't like this glass for stirring, but I'm gonna use it anyway. What did I say? One and a half ounces, or the three-parter of your tequila. I'll take this guy over here, my metric jigger, and fill it up about, it's not gonna be exactly an ounce and a half. It's probably gonna be more like sub 50 milliliters, maybe like 40-ish milliliters or so, maybe less than that. I'll flip it around for the other side for the ounce and the half an ounce or the equivalent there. Um, by the way, I will also openly state out there as well. I've been trying to do a little more like short form content stuff and whatnot and trying to optimize my flow for that. So one of the things that I did Oh, I heard, I had a heart attack. I heard like something, Anna's watching some anime downstairs. Yes, dear? Is your phone still connected to the bathroom? No, I don't believe so, but I can turn my Bluetooth off just in case. Can you do that because it's my beats? Lo-fi beats? Oh, my, my music turned off. Look at that, that's so interesting. Wow. Oh, come on. No, silly. Oh my God. <laughs> we experience more technical difficulties. I love it. I need an ounce of lime juice in there. I don't think I left that at your house. I do not drink reposado. Where did I get this? I don't know where I got it from. No, you didn't leave it here at the house. I think you maybe you acquired it by mistake or something. I'm honestly not so sure. Either way, somehow tequila found its way into my thing. Found its way into my collection. Anna, can you lower that a bit? I can hear it very clearly upstairs. She's waiting to listen to some holiday. Whoa! They're falling everywhere. So, I drink silver and black, says my- Ooh, black tequila? Is black tequila a thing? Is it like like the really, really aged stuff? Um, there's a word for that. It's not reposado. Ane añejo. I believe it's añejo. I believe it's the higher level. I think it's blanco, reposado, añejo. Or it might be añejo then, reposado? I'm not exactly sure. And then you need a half an ounce. Ooh, ooh, no, no, yes, it is a half an ounce. Half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of your mojito stuff. Mojito, mojito, mojito. This is just the way that I'm doing it. This is not what the recipe calls for. I just want something to wet my gullet. There we go. I love mezcals. Dude, I also love mezcals. Mezcal, just a quick personal exposition. I discovered mezcal after getting this book for the first time. And I, it said mezcal plus tequila. I was like, I don't really know what mezcal is. And so I went to the store to see if I could find a mezcal up there. And the only one that I could find was this Del Magüe Vida mezcal and the fact that it's just like you know it's it's the mother spirit it's like every other agave thing you can imagine with tequila being like the tiny little slice in the center that everyone's always so popular is about um from the little bit of research that i've done on it it's kind of having a bit of a like a like a like a i guess a renaissance if you will because people didn't necessarily know about it much before and it wasn't as available as it is now because people are wising up or rather maybe not the people are wising up but like the markets are wising up people probably have always loved mezcal mezcal and tequila but now the people elsewhere who have the dollar are saying yes 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 to the mezcal thing and now we can buy mezcal uh it's the only one available in my store which is kind of sad but um i just made myself a mockingbird just just because it's basically creme de menthe some minty component lime juice some sour component and tequila some tequila component i used a reposado instead of a blanco instead of using creme de menthe i used a mojito liqueur by don q and i also added the lime juice in there so it is kind of sour i don't think it's mixed very well but honestly i wasn't intending on it to be mixed very well i was just experimenting actually not as sour as i thought it was gonna be the minty juice is actually very very light there it's very pleasant it is kind of light. It's a very light one. I'd say it's more or less on the, it's kind of, kind of not as alcoholic as I usually imagine it to be. The reposado notes, I guess the more oakier notes of the tequila are kind of lost on me because I think the other stuff going on there is kind of overshadowing it. But you know what? That's the wonderful thing about mixology. It's all about trying new things and seeing what works. Uh, RS Calv also says, Dobel is good tequila. Black is cafe tequila coffee infused. Like we could, like the Patron XO. I love. I love that stuff. Let me grab myself a coaster because 
I like my bar. It's a pretty, pretty bar. Then we're gonna dive a little bit into that. I guess the current recipe, I should have put up there the Mockingbird. Let me, let me erase that to prepare it for later. The whole current recipe thing is new too. I'm doing a lot of like new things on here. So if I like forget things, it's because I'm too dense to notice um, and it's a mistake. So, but I'm open about that stuff because nobody's perfect. That's just gonna be, that's the theme. You know what? That's the theme of today's uh, bar with an extreme. It's about not being perfect. If tequila is the perfection that you're always trying to compare yourself to, try to be a mezcal. Maybe it's not perfect. It's not gonna be 100% blue agave, but you know what? It's damn good. And it's got a character all of its own. But in any case, with that exposition out of the way, let's dive into it. Mezcal and tequila by Robert Simonson, a book that I found in some like, like off like Philly themed ish gift shop that I, I was like, I was walking by and I saw it in the window. I was like, this place sells cocktail books. And lo and behold, it sold like three of them. And I was like, I don't have a book in my collection that will teach me how to do good on my tequilas and apparently my mezcals. And if I can ever find more mezcals out there, I am absolutely going to hoard that quantity. I actually made my first online liquor order the other day, and it's supposed to arrive tomorrow, which is convenient because I will be home because I work remotely on Thursdays, which is very, very nice. Which I guess, I guess I don't always work from home on Thursdays, but that's the usual thing, which is a good thing, and I like that. So this book kind of has it's a it's a cocktail book, but it also kind of gives you other things that you can do, or the the I guess more of a historical aspect on it. It's claiming that these are mixed drinks for the golden age of agave. And I think it was kind of more what I was describing before of like, people are like kind of really realizing that like mezcal has a really, really attractive quality to it. And there's more to um, blue agave spirits than just tequilas, which if I'm correct in saying have to, I don't know all the laws around it, but they have to be made in Oaxaca, Mexico, which is spelled O-A-X-A-C-A, -A -A. Oaxaca. Yes, I believe that is the case. But I am not the professional here, as I will continue to say. So I'm going to read a little bit of the introduction here and kind of go through this, and um, we'll see how it goes. And I think, I don't know, would the other angle be helpful here? We can all see the book that I'm reading. We'll try that. I'm going to try that. I have a new camera angle, too, and I love playing around with new things. So let's try it. So I have a camera angle here. Let's see. The, the video quality is a little weird, um, and it artifacts a little bit, but this is the book that I am reading. It is. It is. Is this backwards or forwards? Let's see. Mezcal, Mezcal plus Tequila by Robert Simonson. Bar with an X, we're, uh, we're reading. It's all about narration. So the introduction goes and, and shares that 15 years ago, a book called Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails wouldn't have been published. Oh, tequila cocktails might have seen the light of day, but even that would have been a stretch once you got past the few widely known and consumed drinks, such as the Margarita, the Paloma, the Tequila Sunrise, and then there would have been the question as to whether anyone would buy it. After all, for much of the 20th century, tequila was known more for shots than mixing. You didn't savor it, you threw it back. Dare I say, you devour it. My words. Um, rather, rather unwillingly. One time somebody approached me at a party and was like, would you like to meet my friend? And I was like, I would love to meet your friend. I love meeting new people. And she pulls out a bottle of like, like uh, I think it was like Don Julio or something. I don't remember exactly what the brand of tequila was. And I was like, oh, that's your friend? She's like, yeah, this is my friend. And then she poured me like a double shot of it and I threw it back and I was like, I need water after this. Um, it was a very interesting way to introduce both yourself and a friend. I don't think I'd recommend it, but um, I, I eventually became a cocktail guy, so I guess it kind of worked out. As for mezcal cocktails, says Robert Simonson, well, there were really none to speak of. Hell, in the United States market, there was almost no mezcal at all. And what mezcal there was, that forbidding bottle with the worm in it, wasn't very good, and was little understood by the bartenders who poured it and the few drinkers who ordered it. If tequila was a dare you took up in a bar and regretted the morning after, mezcal was a double dog dare, a journey truly into the unknown. I'd go further into the introduction there, but alas, this is not my book to be selling to people or giving out free and whatnot, so I'm just going to skip to to another section of the part that uh, I think is more or less more more suiting for a cocktail stream because we're we're doing cocktails things around here. I would recommend picking up the book because I think it is a very good read and I haven't personally gone through the whole thing myself, um, but I think it's very very good. On page seventeen, the question pops up of what are mezcal and tequila anyways here is a quick, brief primer. You didn't, needn't know everything, excuse me, you needn't know everything about the centuries-old history of agave spirits to enjoy them, but if you're going to drink them, as I am right now, you might as well become familiar with the basics. Tequila and mezcal are both distilled from the agave plant, a family of 
big, spiky succulents of various sizes and shapes that look like relatives of the cactus, but are actually closer kin to the asparagus family. Who knew? Agave plants are native to the southwestern United States, Mexico, and Central and South America. They take forever to grow, are great at storing up sugars, hence why they're like distillable and stuff. Um, great at storing sugar. I actually lost my place. I can't believe it. And have been converted into intoxicating beverages since forever. Mezcal is historically the mother spirit, tequila being just one of her children, albeit is the one that left the nest and made a lot of money and got its name in the papers. One used to be able to say, by way of easy definition, that all tequila is mezcal, but not all mezcal is tequila. That's still true from a mother nature point of view. However, recent laws in Mexico, passed to protect the def definition of mezcal, have bestowed official recognition to just nine Mexican states, Durango, Guerrero, Guanajuato, Michoacan, Michoacan, Oaxaca, Puebla, San Luis Potosi, Tamaulipas, and Zacatecas. Um, I'm not Hispanic in any way, so if I completely butchered that, I apologize. Although I did take a few Spanish classes once upon a time, but I wouldn't be the one pretending to know exactly what I'm doing here. Um, Ooh, none of which is Jalisco, of the nine states that I mentioned, the famous home of tequila. Oh, I thought it was Oaxaca. I was apparently wrong about that. Good. We appreciate swift correction around here. Tequila can also be legally made in certain municipalities of Guanajuato, Micho, Michoacan, Nayarit, and Tamalipas. Therefore, tequila legally can no longer be called mezcal. Interesting. I was under the impression that it had to be in a specific, specific area. However, I'm apparently wrong about that which is great, and I proved myself wrong here. That is to say, if Robert Simonson is really the professor to be listening to on this. Additionally, oop, hold on. Tequila is tequila and tequila only, but that's like saying Kleenex isn't facial tissue, it's just Kleenex. In broader historical terms, away from all the bureaucrats and lawyers and other busybodies, tequila is still a kind of mezcal. There's a lot more in here about it and it's a whole like four and a half page long thing it's an absolutely wonderful read probably i haven't actually read it all myself but suffice to say i want to find the part where it goes through about how one is specifically blue weber and one is otherwise so skipping a little farther forward the meaningful differences in mezcal type boil down to three things what agave species were used where they were grown and who distilled them only one kind of agave, Blue Weber, can be used to make tequila, while dozens are allowed by law to be used in making mezcal. But today, outside of Mexico, when mixing cocktails with mezcal, you're really going to be dealing with just a handful of agave varieties, and one in particular. The majority of mezcals currently on the shelves are made from espadín, the most commonly grown agave variety in Oaxaca. Espadín grows to maturity in roughly 8 years, lightning speed in comparison to most agave species, which can take up to 30 years to ripen. It is widely farmed, but also grows wild. The widespread use of espadine and mezcal production, however, doesn't mean different brands and bottles are going to taste like the same old, same old. A tasting of a few espadine mezcals side by side at your local mezcaleria will quickly dispel that notion. So, for all intents and purposes, there are many mezcals, there are many tequilas, I suppose, but it seems like tequila itself is more kind of varied in terms of, I guess, where you would be able to make it, and mezcal is more varied in particular on the various different types of agaves that you can make. Specifically, just as a quick wrap up, tequila is, has a home in Jalisco, can also be made in nine other different areas of Mexico, I believe, um, and is made from purely blue Weber agave. Mezcal, most popularly made with espadine agave, um, is not Blue Weber and is made in, I think, Oaxaca and a couple of different areas as well. But there's a bunch of other different types of agaves as well that are beyond the scope of this particular set of literature here that can also be used to create mezcal, which is kind of cool. Going back to my own, like, personal interpretation, mezcal always seemed to me, when I first found it, as a very, very, like, wildly, like, variable type of spirit and stuff. Like, to the point that one time a friend of mine sat me down and was like, I'm gonna have let you try some of this fancy scotch that I have laying around, and I took a sip of that and it was smoky, it was almost like varnish, it was peaty, as it was described to me, and I was like, there's no way that that is made from the same, I guess, grain as, like, whiskeys that I've had in the past. And although technically that is true, 
through. It's different. They have other stuff that they do to it, and I'm not a master on that either, so I'm not even going to try to go down that route. But the fact that different whiskeys from the store can taste wildly different, different bourbons can taste pretty different. Rye may taste similar to other ryes, but your rye may not necessarily taste the same as, let's say, a corn whiskey, um, which is actually kind of a cool thing. And in my head, conceptually, I was like, oh, that's like mezcal. Like, you know, because there's multiple different types of whiskey, but like they all kind of taste a little different. There's probably different types of mezcal, and they're all a little different too. Kind of. Although whiskey's more in terms of the mash bill, different types of grains that go into what, like, this, this like, process and then gets distilled and whatnot. And um, there's a whole other process for mezcal and tequila as well. If I can roughly uh, imagine for a moment, I believe the process is more like you take the the blue agave plant, you kind of let it grow for as long as it needs to, you chop off all of the green parts of it. I want to call them leaves, but I know they're not called leaves. But what's interesting is the concentrated piña in the center. It's like the core of the agave plant. And once you chop off all the green stuff, you can do a lot of things to this. You can, I think, chop it up just immediately, like kind of put it into a little bit of a churning machine and get this like little slurry that's got a shit ton of sugars in it. And of course, if it's got sugars in it, naturally, you can dis you can distill it. Um, but you'll also do things like bury it in the ground, set it on fire, do other things to it. There's a lot of things that go into it. I believe a lot of the smokiness comes from the fact that they take these piñas, they kind of put them into a big fire and like bury them for a little while and then dig them back up and then conduct the fermentation process. But again, beyond the scope of this particular bar stream, I am not so much of a historian, although I do like to dabble every once in a while. That might go into more details, and I do plan on taking a little bit more time to go through the different cocktail books that I have, more so to get my myself a little more well-rounded on the history of the libations that we're putting together over here because I think there is a lot that gets taken for granted for and when you start to realize that and when you start mostly when you start to realize that the things you're putting in your mouth even though they're labeled the same thing don't taste like the same thing that's when I start to get really really curious in any case um we move on my mocking tail is treating me well I don't think that's the best way that that's been mixed but so I'm not actually a huge fan of that. So what I'm just going to do is I'm going to put it off to the side. And I have actually no shame in that. I'm like the kind of person where like for a while I felt very, very pressured to kind of finish the drinks that I was making. But to be perfectly honest, if you're not into it, like you shouldn't feel any pressure to continue drinking what's in front of you. If you don't like it and you have a bartender that's nice, I feel, I mean, I don't, you know, I don't go out to super many bars recently and I've never specifically said, I don't really like this. Can I get anything else? But I feel like if we're all nice folk, and they'd be like, yeah, no, you don't like that. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you told me. I don't want you to slurp the whole thing down. If it's one of my drinks and I make something and you don't like, I'd be like, well, thanks for telling me. Like, <laughs> I didn't want you to suffer through it. I did this because I thought you'd enjoy it. And if you don't, the honesty is greatly appreciated. So, in any case, Mezcal Tequila. There's, there's a lot to go around. And through this book, there are a couple of different ones that I wanted to kind of go over. Some doing mezcal, some doing tequila, some combine the two together. I think um, there's actually, I found that there was a lot of preparation that would need to go into a cocktail stream like this. There's a lot of, I'm starting to get into the world of like tinctures and stuff and a lot of like, like preparation and whatnot where you kind of take spirits and you infuse them with other things or you go out there and you be, find like very, very particular spices or very, very particular types of spirits. It, at least in this case, I think that I was, I was perusing through the book, there was at least three or four different types of, I think it was um, Amaros, and I just don't have all those in my collection. I see that I should straighten up. Ooh, could you please fix that thing? I could please fix that thing. I wonder what, what I need to fix around here. I push that out camera, great. Ooh, I should pick a cocktail and write it on the board over here because currently it says that we're not, we don't have a current recipe, which is technically true, but we can change that. So I think the first thing that I want to do is we're going to do one of the the Mezcal cocktails, one that I've pulled from this book called Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails, specifically on page 41, and it's called Gunmetal Blue. Gunmetal Blue because it uses blue curacao. It's a Mezcal drink that uses a bit of blue curacao to give it a little bit of a blue color. And just to give a little bit of an inclination of what that looks like, I will pop this over here and use my other angle to show everybody what's going on. Oh no, dropped it. There we go. It is this cocktail here the one with the little it kind of looks like there's an egg floating in there it's actually kind of funny if i'm being perfectly honest there 
Um, but yes, it is from this book, and I'm going to jump basically straight into it. Gunmetal Blue, uh, created by Nick Bennett in Porchlight, New York City in the year 2015. It was an instant hit and an Instagram sensation. When Danny Mayer's first ever bar, Porchlight, opened up in 2015, it came along when both mezcal drinks and blue cocktails were enjoying a moment. The vibrant color caught drinkers' attention, but the flavor of this deceptively simple sour kept them coming back for more which is actually quite interesting. I like, again, not too much a sour drinker, but they pop in every once in a while and they deserve to have some screen time. Okay, okay, it looks pretty good. It does kind of look good. That the fact that it's got, it really looks like, I, I was actually going through a lot of my recipes and stuff and trying to pick out which ones to do while I was at work. And I opened up to this page and my cocoa workers were like, is that an egg floating in there? And I was like, no, it's not an egg, it's an orange. Although we do put eggs in cocktails and they were kind of alarmed, but. That's how I make a damn good sour. This one doesn't actually call for any, like, like any, any egg or anything, which I guess could be a good thing. More Than Awesome pops in and says, oh man, I made so many mistakes with tequila in their 20s that they can't be in the same room with tequila or mezcal, even though they are very pretty drinks. My favorite thing about the tequila, or, I'm sorry, the mezcal that I have, which is the only one that I have because it's the only one that I can source here in Philadelphia, is this Del Magüe Vida. It specifically says on the back, sip it. Don't shoot it. This is a mezcal to be enjoyed, not one to be thrown back like some of the tequilas of the past. Um, but he used it a couple of his different things. To create this drink, we're combining them all into a shaker, shaking it up, and then straining it into a chilled coupe glass. Um, I should start chilling a coupe glass because I don't have any particular chilling right now. I'm going to pick literally the only coupe glasses that I have. I literally only have these coupe glasses. This is all I have. It's very difficult for me to find coupe glasses. Could I buy them online? Yeah, definitely. Am I going to go through all the effort now? Mm. Not when the thrill of going to the thrift stores and trying to find a coupe glass or set of coupe glasses authentically is so high in demand. I went to a little thrift sale and they actually sold four of these coupe glasses all in a set. And it was like 10 bucks. I was like, yo, I need to have this. And I also had an absolutely wonderful conversation um, with the lady who was selling them. So I was absolutely hyped. More than awesome recognizes that bottle. Our, their coupe glasses come from thrift stores. Dude. Don't spend full price on drinks. Oh, I'm sorry, on well, spend full price on drinks if they're good drinks. If not, get your own bottles so you can make them for significantly cheaper. If you go to the store and buy like fresh glasses from like a Target or whatever, they're gonna charge you like 15 bucks for like what? Maybe a single glass or so? Dude, there's a Philly AIDS thrift store here in Philadelphia. I walk in there, there's an entire room filled with glasses. You've got anywhere between really funky looking pint glasses to coupe glasses every once in a while and like tiny little sock glasses from every, literally everywhere in the world. Um, and they sell for like a dollar a piece. Like, at least in that case, when I go home and potentially break it on the uh, the commute on over, I don't feel as bad about it. Um, and you can get really cool, like, uh, glasses. Like, for example, I got this... I got this cactus uh, cup <laughs> that I actually, when I went to Vegas the other day for a conference, I actually found the same cup in one of the restaurants over there. I was like, yes, absolutely. More Than Awesome got their sets from thrift shops in Maine on vacation and lovingly packed those in their luggage. You know, if you, if you can pack well with newspaper and stuff, those can, things can go quite the distance, but you gotta be careful. So we're gonna need to shake things up together, so which means I'm gonna get myself a shaker. I'm gonna pull out my least favorite shaker first. Least favorite, not because of the way it looks. It's a beautiful, pink plaid but like these types of shakers like with the thing on the top and the thing like i'm not a huge fan of it was a gift from a co-worker and it's pink plaid and i love plaid and i love the color pink so i can't i can't be mad i, I cannot be mad at all about it also because like there's not enough like i like to do ice in one part and like libation other liquids in the other and it just kind of there's it's it's kind of hard to do that i guess i can't i'm gonna try that actually I'm gonna try to see if I can put ice in one and all the other liquid ingredients in the other ones. Uh, the first thing we're gonna need to start out with is our Del Magüe Vida Mezcal, specifically this mezcal. And it's kind of cool. When I picked up this book, I was like, I can't believe that it's calling out this particular mezcal, the only one that I could find specifically. And I was really happy with that. I need some ice, naturally. If we're doing a shakage, I like to do one large cube, a couple little cubes. Just kind of the way that I was taught to indoctrinate it, and uh, I just kind of keep it there. So here's one large cube, awkwardly placed in a. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm gonna put the other cubes in there anyways. I said that I was gonna do it, um, and I'm a man of my words. So let's. <laughs> A man of my word. Anyway, either way, we're still gonna get. We're still gonna let this come up to temperature a little bit. Uh, as I've been learning in another book that I've been reading called Liquid Intelligence, um, it's all about letting the ice kind of come to temperature first, 
Um, and then we kind of do it. Ooh! Excellent! You just stay like that for a little bit. Wait, 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 wait. Other camera angle. Check this out. Check it out, check it out, check it out. <laughs> I actually stacked them on top of each other. That's so impressive. <laughs> Absolutely incredible. Anyways. <laughs> That's great. We need one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of specifically your Dell Megway Vita Mezcal. I have a decent amount in this bottle, uh, but I would not be surprised if for some reason I wound up making my way to the bottom of it uh, by the time that we get to the end of this episode. Because although the board says Mezcal and tequila cocktails, we're kind of heavy on the Mezcal because I, I'm honestly more curious about it. So, Mezcal. Mezcal in your glass. What else do we need? The next thing we need is some blue curacao, and we're also gonna grab some peach brandy while I'm down there and the lime juice from the fridge, and cinnamon syrup as well. Um, so I'm gonna do one trip for all of them. I say trip, um, but I'm really not going that far. I'm just kinda going to the fridge over here for the lime juice and the cinnamon syrup, which I have conveniently placed in a flask because that's the way to do it. I'm just gonna put them uh, over here. I'm actually very happy that the ice is yet to fall. That's. That's impressive. I'm really happy about that. Of all the technical difficulties that we ran into earlier, I'm just really happy it's like treating us well this time. And we also need blue curacao and brandy. I got the curacao. There we go. And we uh, need the brandy. Where brandy at? Where brandy at? Brandy at? Brandy at? I know I have beach brandy right here. My brandy should be peach right in front, literally right in front of my face. Incredible. <laughs> It was literally staring me in the face. Um, I'm a very dense individual, so I, I tend to forget. Um, but we need a half an ounce, or about 15 milliliters of that curacao, and a quarter of an ounce, very, very tall, small text there, or about seven milliliters of that peach brandy. Um, I don't really have measuring lines on this jigger here, so I'm gonna eyeball it. I need about a half. So let's see if I can get about a half in there. Yeah, that's about a half. Put that in there. Um, for those who are indoct or un not not doctrinated, not indoctrinated. For those who may not know otherwise, blue curacao, it's the blue one. It's gonna make the drink blue, and it's also got an orange flavor to it. No, not the blue orange that my bartending teacher once upon a time fooled me with. It's just it's just orange, and it's kind of like a very very sweet like confectionery orange. Not kind of like not orange zesty, more orange juice, but like like on the sweeter side. Like I imagine like orange juice the way that it would be advertised to like kids who maybe are not, I say not into vegetables, but like not into fruits, I guess, cause fruits are naturally very sweet, but like much, much sweeter than that. Almost unnaturally so. More Than Awesome says, the blue drink makes you drink blue. These are the tips that you're here for. You're not here for all the professional like flair tending tips and tricks and stuff like that. Watching people flip knives in the air or do funny things like, like, mm -hmm with their bar spoons. It's all about the obvious things that you might forget about. Because to be perfectly honest, and I've talked about this a lot, because again, have I said that I'm kind of dense? A little, maybe a little tunnel visioned even? It's the things that are right in front of my face that I can't seem to realize are there. And I'm definitely not the only person who's like that in the world. And honestly, I'd say it's a bit of a benefit. The next ingredient that we're going to need is three quarters of an ounce of that lime juice, which I had some, Mm -hmm. Right in front of my face. This is what I was saying. <laughs> Here for the real world tips. Only the real world tips. Because blue thing make thing turn blue. Indeed. Indeed. If it wasn't already obvious. Um, that and uh, the tip that if you find blue oranges, I think you should call a doctor. That or you're probably in a museum or like an art exhibit. Because like I don't think blue oranges are real. Not unless somebody like injected them with like blue dye. I'm sure somebody's done it. I hate this container for pouring, so there's my scant attempt at three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of that lime juice that's going in there. Freshly unthawed today's episode because I just had so many, I, I, I had these limes for so long. But according to at least a uh, quick Google search, uh, if you freeze lime juice or lemon juice or citrus juice in general, it's just fine. Just got it unthought. And then it's got like, and to be perfectly honest, it doesn't taste any differently than it did last week. And it didn't taste any differently than when it was freshly squeezed. Although that was about, that was a little while longer ago. So my memory's faded since then. Um, why? Well, because time and because alcohol. Seven milliliters or a quarter of an ounce of your cinnamon syrup. Mine's a one-to-one -one ratio. 
Um, the book that I was using the other day would recommend a higher ratio of sugar to water, and I think it was made with about three sticks of Ceylon cinnamon specifically. And um, it's good. It's a good cinnamon spirit. Uh, it's a cinnamon syrup. It stuck around for as long as it has because it's treating me so well. It compliments me every once in a while. Maybe? Who knows? That just might be the worm in the mezcal that's making me say, making me think and or say that. So we've got our mezcal on there, our curacao, our brandy, our lime juice, our cinnamon syrup, and we'll do a little garnishy thing at the end, which is going to require an orange. But not yet. We need to shake the thing first. And somehow, by some beautiful miracle of mezcal, the ice is still there, sitting on top, just waiting to be combined with the other liquid reagents. It's actually sticking... I don't know if you could have seen that because my shirt is very, very, very light color, but actually stuck there for a while. That's kind of cool. Um, get in there. Yeah, this this shaker is not very, not very thick. I can actually show this now. There's like not a lot of, not a lot of space in there. But you know what? We go with it. We try for it. I like, I get like, I had so many of these moments uh, before installing this new camera angle, which I finally like figured out how I was supposed to do. Um, I have a phone hooked up using an app on the computer and on the app, and it's, it's a little wonky, but it works. Uh, but I had so many of these times where I'm just like, man, I wish everybody could see what I see. And, and now we did it. And maybe it's a little artifact and a little scraggly, but damn, it works. Gunmetal blue, I didn't even write it on the board, my God. <laughs> I'm all over the place. That's the current recipe. I'm still getting used to this too, so I apologize. Gunmetal blue. That is the recipe. Gunmetal blue. Should I write it in blue? Gun metal. And you know what? I'm gonna use blue. Blue. There we go. That is a cocktail name. Do not forget it. And now you will never, you will never forget it. Um, <laughs> my shadow is casting the biggest of shadows on the blue one. Anyways, shake it, shake it real good. Whoa, it's not completely sealed because I hate this container. Okay, okay, are you sealed now? No, you're still not really sealed. Can, can we, can we seal please? Oh, oh, the, uh, the little, uh, the little piece of elastic, elastic that is supposed to hold the seal together properly is not holding the seal. <sighs> Again, looks beautiful, but uh, not very utilitarian. Some people were just meant to be models. This cocktail shaker, meant to be a model. <laughs> it's still leaking, but you know what? We're going for it. Instructions also say to shake for 15 seconds. Gosh, that was stressful. And then strain it to a coupe glass. A chilled one if you have it. Oh my god. Let's bring that angle over here so I can bring the coupe glass out. Oh my god. That's why I use that once during streams. Only use it once. Anyways. Here's my coupe glass. It's artifacting a little bit, but here we are. It's all about getting the perfect angle. Where the perfect angle at? Oh, oh goodness, that's a nice angle. We're also gonna need to chop off a piece of an orange, specifically to make it look like what they're calling an orange coin. And I have a cutting board, and I have an orange that I'm gonna wet just a little bit, just to give it a little bit of a clean. Clean your fruits. Clean your fruits, or they will betray you. More than also says, I mean, I'm sure the blue stuff will wash right out of your shirt if you spill it. We hope so. I guess, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what's funny? This shirt in particular, I have spilled more stuff on than any other shirt that I own. So we need like a little bit of a cross section there. So I'm gonna try to do a little bit like, I'm gonna try to do a piece like this. I think that's a nice coin. There you go. Is that too big? A little big, but I like it. I'll keep it. I'll keep it, I'll keep it, I'll keep it. All right, y'all. Gun middle blue. I'm gonna strain that. I don't know why I was removing the top from it. There we go. It's difficult. There we go. Blue. 
with a coin in the middle. There we go. Gunmetal blue. Wow, actually? Oh, damn. I'm looking at the way that this looks on stream. This is freaking beautiful. Oh, my God. Oh, I'm totally nerding out over here. This is like I set up the angle the other day and I was only testing with like completely clear glasses. Yeah, it's artifacting a little bit and doing a little weird stuff and it's got an odd delay, but like, oh my god, it looks like the book. It totally looks like the book. What a comparison there. Oh, also, by the way, um, there is a new command. It's called exclamation point photo. And if anybody does that, it's going to take a photo of exactly what you're seeing on screen right now and put it on our Discord server. And, and I'm not even going to expect anybody else to do it except for me. Oh, it did it. Wait, wait, wait. I wonder if it works. Let's see. Let's see. Yes! It totally worked! Did it pop up in the Discord server? I bet it did. I bet it did. Oh, my God. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check it. First time I've used it. This is the first time it's been used. Oh yeah, there it is. Oh my god, I'm so hyped. That was freaking awesome. Thank you everybody for experiencing this with me. Yes, <laughs> we had technical difficulties, but it still works, and that means that it's cause for celebration. It's great. All right, is there any more in here? Like, gosh, I got so hyped up about it. I think we deserve this cocktail. Seriously though baby um yes and as the message said as as the chat box with chat bot with an x will tell you um it is now in the discord server if you want to take that picture and do stuff with it i don't i don't know if i would consider this legally mine you technically you were the one who took the picture you i believe legally speaking it's whoever who pulls the the shutter or the, the clicks the button on the camera is the legal owner of the picture however i don't know how that works with APIs that somebody else made and this all like tunnel through and stuff, but there you go. It's beautiful. It's blue. And um, does it taste good? Presentation is five out of five. And I don't know if that's just the camera talking or if that's me talking. Or maybe it is the Cameron talking. Who knows? Again, so Gunmetal Blue was made with some Mezcal, some Cura Blue Curacao, some Peach Brandy, some squeezed lime juice or thawed lime juice, and some cinnamon syrup, garnished with what they're calling an orange coin, in the sense where you, you kind of take only, only a, a, a single facet of the orange and chop it off. Not a whole slice, we don't want the slice. I mean, I guess you can do the slice, but you've got to have a bit of the rind. It's all about the glowing rind in the midst of the glowing orange rind in the midst of this blue sea. In any case, cheers, my friends. Gunmetal blue. Mmm. Oh. Oh, I do like that. Let, let us break that down. So, the mezcal is not overpowering at all. I would even say it mostly tastes like the blue curacao because there's a beautiful sweetness there however what i wasn't expecting to also taste very prominently was that peach brandy it's a wonderful combination of like a sweet orange and peach flavor however it's smoky the way that it's laying on my tongue now like it started off very sweet and now it's left a savory sensation which is really cool um the cinnamon notes I think are kind of mixing up with the more smokier notes that I'm experiencing there, although there was only like a quarter of an ounce of the cinnamon syrup in there, so I don't think it was going to particularly flow through anyways. But there's a lot of there's a lot of sugary components in here, and there's not there's a couple different like types of spirits and stuff, but it's not super high alcohol. This is a really, really tasty cocktail. This is really good. I think this has been the first, I guess, mezcal cocktail that I've had that it doesn't hide the smokiness doesn't overpower the smokiness it's the smokiness itself is not the piece that's overpowering it's balanced it's nice and it's and it's good and it leaves things very wonderfully are you gonna be on a little longer or are you finishing up oh no we're, we're continuing this is only technically cocktail number one rice aroni popped in at just the right time there's a whole lot of i don't remember what spirit we were covering um but we're covering more of that spirit and more tonight the bar with an x this last recipe was called Gunmetal Blue because it's blue. I don't know where the gunmetal part comes from, but it was created at a bar called Porchlight in 2015. We're having more mention of like history and stuff around here. This is so, so pleasant. Oh my God. 
I made myself a, a really weird mockingbird earlier, which uses tequila, mint ingredients, and lime ingredients. And it was mixed really weirdly. I didn't actually finish it. I just left it there. We'll clean it up after stream. Or if I'm running out of space, I will clean it up midstream. Uh, but this is super pleasant. This is going to stay back here with the bartender because <laughs> it's really, really tasty. Wow. Make sure you're staying hydrated, everybody. Are you following along at home? <laughs> are you also drinking? Because <laughs> if you are, don't forget your water. I often do. That's where the, there's a hydrate button. That's not there just because everybody else has it. That's there because I will legitimately forget. And my water actually tastes a little bit weird because um, I had some um, Lapsang Suchong tea that I was drinking yesterday. And when I was done with it, I didn't actually finish the whole thing. I just dumped it into my water. I was like, eh, it's not going to, there's a lot of water in there. I'm not going to taste it. I can still taste it. It's kind of weird. I also put, it's really disappointing too. I also wanted to do a Mezcal Negroni, but I completely ran out of Campari the other day. I made for myself one, I made myself a Mezcal Negroni on Monday and I was out of Campari for today. And I was very saddened about that. The free heathen is raiding with a party with 11. It's coming, it's coming. Welcome everybody to the bar with an X. My name's Cameron. I spell my name with an X. It's all silent. It's not supposed to be confusing, but it is. Welcome here. More than awesome learned about the Kynar Negroni the other day. Kynar instead of Campari. It sounds wonderful. Hi, everybody. Look at this little, like, cool thing going on here. What is up, everybody? It is a total party in here. Pikachu's wearing his party hat. Um, this cause feels like a cause for celebration. Welcome to the party, Free Heathen. That alert should be popping up around here somewhere. Maybe it did. Maybe it didn't. Streamlabs has not been my friend today. Um, but here's a kazoo. On, and the theme is Tequila and Mezcal. So here's everybody's favorite song, Tequila. <laughs> chance guys tequila anyway i don't know why the why are the alerts not showing up this is ridiculous hold on i'm gonna go over to my thing streamlabs is my enemy today i don't like streamlabs any more than anybody else does let me see if i refresh this if things will start popping up put your alerts refresh come on streamlabs get it together bro anyways who needs streamlabs when you've got a beautifully bombastic voice i see the free heathen popping in here thank you welcome to the bar smolly quinn popping in here thank you welcome to the bar pzk cosplay dude i love cosplay let's talk thank you welcome to the bar and frank and b gaming and rice Ronnie just popped in with a prime gaming sub dude oh now the alerts are working Streamlabs is the one failing today i'm the one making cocktails and maybe you all are too we're the ones who are succeeding Wow, I love it. Dude, for he that said it! Everybody said it! Oh my god, it's great. It's just a stream delay. I don't blame anybody there. Um, for those who are popping in, uh, we are making cocktails. There are actually- this is like the perfect time. This is- I'm very slow with things. We're an hour in. You may think that we've covered like two or three cocktails so far. Nope, really only one or two. So there's plenty more rest of the night. If cocktails are your thing, this is the place to be. Thank you. Thank you, and welcome. Oh, and Sony said to straighten up. I really should. Is my... Oh, my camera is off. It's it's okay. What I should do, is to straighten up, is to prepare for the next cocktail. Let's get into it. What is the next cocktail? We did Gunmetal Blue. It's from this book called Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails, which, as the book implies, you're not necessarily supposed to be judging a book by its cover, but when it's, when it's advertising alcohol, you better expect that it's advertising the correct alcohol, and it really is. Um, we're going to go with a different one, and it's called... It's also from this book, and it's called Cocoa Smoke, and I will prepare for that in just the hottest of moments. Oh my goodness, is that a pineapple? Oh my god, it's a pineapple! I love that emote. I love that. Gunmetal Blue is over. It was short-lived, but it is here. And now we're going to do Cocoa Smoke, which... If y'all can guess what cocoa smoke is supposed to taste like, y'all get an A+. Plus. Not that we really pride ourselves on grades around here. We're not in school anymore. I'm not in school anymore, at least. It's called cocoa smoke. Co-coa smoke. It's named that way. You can tell it's an... <laughs> it just makes me think of Nietzsche. Like, you can tell it's an Aspen by the way it is. You can tell it's cocoa smoke by the way it is, because it's cocoa and it's smoke. 
<laughs> Don't judge a book by its cover or a cocktail by its garnish. This is true. This thing, <laughs> this gunmetal blue looks like it's got an egg floating in it. There is no egg. Only orange and cinnamon and mezcal and curacao. Blue oranges. But you get that the other day. That is the smuggest E in the world. Cocoa, cocoa smoke. Cocoa smoky. Is it smuggy? Smoke. <laughs> okay, Coco Smoke. That's on page, I believe it was 44 of this book here. Oh, we're off to a great start here. Oh, this is absolutely wonderful. That's Spaghetti Western. That's the wrong page. Oh, I was in the middle of looking through this book. Oh, I need to take a moment to just like breathe for a moment. I feel like the, the adrenaline is just like... Remember, when you're drinking cocktails or tasting spirits and stuff, don't forget to breathe. You really get it. You really kind of open up the spirit if you um if you breathe a little bit. Where was cocoa smoke? That was on page thirty-three. I went way far past it. My goodness. There you are. There's cocoa smoke. There we go. Cocoa smoke looks like this. I'm not gonna move the camera angle around. I'm just gonna put this up against it. This is what cocoa smoke is supposed to look like. Take a look at that. Please ignore the artifacting video feed. That's why we have a nice camera on the main view. Annie just woke up. Welcome, Annie. Lovely to have you from a nap. How's it popping? Looks like a good theme for tonight. What's the theme again? I don't even remember what base spirits we're using. Hmm. Anyway, next cocktail calls is called Coco Smoke. Coco Smoke was created by N. Carey Allen by the Washington, who worked, I guess at the time, by the Washington Post in 2016. Carey Allen is the spirits and cocktail columnist for the Washington Post and one of the best writers covering the cocktail beat. She does a lot of R&D, research and development work, in preparation for her columns, and occasionally an original drink comes out of the process. Hey. If today's bartenders are going to insist on writing cocktail books, it's only fair that cocktail journalists be allowed to invent drinks as well. This recipe accompanied a 2016 column, The Power Trio of Chocolate. The grassy smoke of mezcal and ancho chili pepper liqueur makes for a heady, sexy sip, wrote Alan. The name of the drink says it all, except for the sexy part. That may not be perfectly obvious, but it's a cocktail. If it, if it ain't damn sexy, I don't know what sexy really is. Rice Roni says, Cocoa Smoke, that's my breakfast, a bowl of Cocoa Puffs and a cigarette. A perfect combination for the perfect start to hopefully the perfect day. Did you see the Netflix cocktail show? No. Is it the one called Cocktail? Because I don't think that was on Netflix. Are there more cocktail? If you, if you can share what that is, I will write it on the board and I will probably binge it by next week. Because <laughs> I love cocktail shows. Um, I watched one called Psalm. It was a sommelier one where people were like doing wine stuff and whatnot. There's a Netflix cocktail show. Please enlighten us. It was a game show, and it was fantastic. The mixology competition is amazing. Is that what it's called? The mixology competition. I didn't know that was a thing. See, the wonderful thing about Twit, the wonderful thing about live streaming is that there are people from all different walks of life who kind of pop in and are just like, hey, like, did you know about this thing? And oftentimes the answer is no. And I'm very happy that you shared. It was called the mixology. It's called Drink Masters. Oh, you know, I did hear about that. But I didn't realize it was on Netflix. I for some reason thought it was like on Peacock or something, and I was like, oh, I don't think I have that, and I'm not going to put in the effort to try to find it, but I've been watching Netflix literally all the time, so I most definitely have it. Drink Masters added to the watch list. Oh, absolutely. Thank you so much for sharing that, PZK Cosplay. Um, so Cocoa Smoke. Um, it's got that sexiness of mezcal, it's got the smokiness of cocoa, and it's got the chocolatiness of ancho chili pepper. Um, I definitely said that in the correct order. How do we make such a drink? We combine it together in a mixing glass, three quarters filled with ice. That's very specific. Stir until chilled, 30 seconds. Strain into a chilled coupe. I have to chill another one of my coupe glasses. Everybody's getting the chill coop treatment today. So into the freezer you go. Um, and depending on how long it takes for me to drink this drink, depends on how chill that, uh, how to make this drink, uh, depends on how chill that's going to be. I'm also going to need a mixing apparatus, so I have one of those. What a coincidence, right off camera. A tasting, says Annie. Why, wine tastings are fun. Uh, they went to a fancy one in Napa and they paired snacks with the wine too. Ooh, I like, uh, I went to a restaurant yesterday and they had every single every single meal on the menu had an associated wine pairing. Um, I drank cocktails. They had probably, that's okay, it was called Gran Cafe L'Aquila and it's in Philadelphia. And that was probably, please excuse my French, 
the best fucking espresso martini I've had in my life. It was last night. Um, I stayed up till one o'clock in the morning doing this thing here because I, I wasn't finished yet. And I laid awake in bed for another half hour wondering why the hell I was still awake. I was like, oh, I just had some really good espresso. And for some reason, I just couldn't comprehend it. More Than Awesome says, if you don't have Netflix, they can DM me a Twitter later. They love fancy wine tastings and snacks. I do have a Netflix. I think I have more or less every streaming service out there, but then they like doubled in count. So now I don't anymore, but I do have Netflix. I got Crunchyroll. I got the Hulu. I got, there's probably more, but the television's not on, so. Oh my goodness. We got a big history lesson for Rice Aroni in here. Strap in. It's a little bit of a lexicon. History of the Coop Class, shrouded in mystery. The Coop Class has a history with enough facets that would keep any storyteller by. While the basic history of the Coop has been well co covered by others, my favorite myth, Rice Aronis, is that the shape of Coop Glasses was inspired by the left breast of Marie Antoinette. Unfortunately, this has been proved to be entirely false, but they're gonna do their best to keep it alive. The breast of Marie Antoinette. I like that. If that was improv, that was very, very impressive. More than awesome drinks wine, half price bottle nights on Mondays and Tuesdays, and they wake up with crazy hangovers. Also, I love that story about the coops. That's a good one. If that's the, if that's like a copy pasta, like I fell for it. That's a good one. Um, but I guess let's see. If anybody's breast is looking like that, I, I gotta wonder how you pulled off a trapezoidal boob. That's um, that's not that's something not even I'm capable of. So you need your mixing glass. It needs to be filled three quarters of the way up with ice. Um, I'll put like two big cubes in there and i think that'll probably accomplish the goal um so it's very it's a very very specific value i don't really know there's one glass there's one cube and uh here comes another one is that three quarters Engineering is not an exact science. Um, we'll go with it. Indeed. And what we're going to need to add to that is a couple of different things. We need the mezcal. We need creme de queco. Uh, specifically Tempest Fugit. I don't have Tempest Fugit. I'm going to use Jaquins. So that's what we have. Ancho chili liqueur and chocolate bitters and an orange twist for garnish. Basically what we're doing here is we're doing a little bit of a stir here. I don't know if this is more... I, I want to say it feels like a Manhattan. I want to say it feels like any other stirred drink out there. It's a little simple. Not too many fancy ingredients going on there. Hopefully it's something that we can appreciate. And I'm sure it will be, as we always do. Even if it tastes bad, we still appreciate it a little bit. Rice Orney says, that's an actual fact. Would I mislead you? Well, hold on. Well, let's take a step back for a moment. Technically speaking, we're all just strangers on the internet who like have a very vague mutual understanding of each other, except for some notable exceptions. So technically, I could be misleading you. None of this could be actual alcohol, and you could be misleading me. All that aside, this is real alcohol, and if I make enough cocktails, it'll start becoming very obvious. More Than Awesome says that they've heard that from another source too, so it must be true. The cocoa smoke like a spicy spike, not hot chocolate. I don't know if you mentioned a creamy element. Nah, no cream in there. Not this time, at least. There was a cream cocktail that I wanted to cover, but it needed chartreuse, and I don't have any chartreuse in my collection yet. So uh, eventually, I'm just going to have to go and fix that. So the first thing we need is our mezcal, naturally. I'm going to bring out my Del Maguey Vita again, naturally. We need an ounce and a half of that, or about 44 milliliters. I'm going to keep with the jigger that I've been using. Um, I only have two of them. I try not to purchase ingredients for the bar unless it's... Or I'm sorry, um utensils for the bar unless there's some sort of like unique element to it um there is a story behind pretty much everything that you see here at the bar here and if anybody asks anything about it i will share that story for the most part this particular jigger i found while i think i was coming home from vermont i had never found a metric jigger before and they were just selling it for like five bucks and i was like that is great i'm gonna take it and that's the story. It's uh, short and sweet. And it measures on one side is 25 milliliters, one side is 50 milliliters, because that's the standard of unit for the folks across the pond. I'm in America. So, Rice Rory says, when it comes to educating people, their default is honest to goodness truth. Ellipses. That ellipses is scaring me. But I respect it. I respect it. I'm going to take another sip of my little gun metal over here, because, ooh. Oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Is that a good one? I'm looking at my screen for a moment. I'm adjusting a little thing so I can catch chat messages a little bit better. Absolutely respect it. So we need our mezcal on there. We've got our mezcal on there. We also need a half an ounce of creme de caco. I um, still am using the same bottle of creme de caco that I got when I first started like really, really getting into cocktail stuff and whatnot, mostly because it's just like, it's been there for a while. Every single time somebody's called for creme de caco, I happen to have it. It's the brand is Jaquins. Some would pronounce it Joaquin's. I don't think that's the correct pronunciation. Um, at least that's what the internet has led me to believe. It's all right. 
tastes like cocoa. I think there are probably better cocoa liqueurs out there, but we shan't screw around with a recipe um, if we don't have to. At least not this time, at least. Unless you've made it a couple times, like I did with the, the Mockingbird earlier. I screwed around with it, and I kind of regretted it. That's fine. Half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of your creme de cacao. If you've got Tempest Fugit, that is the one that is recommended here. Um, I don't have that though, unfortunately. Where is it from? This creme de cacao? The creme de cacao is from the liquor store. Probably the one over in University City. Rice only prides themselves on their research prowess, and the ellipses is just a side effect of being on the cusp of millennial and Gen X. It sounded Spanish. Creme de cacao? Nah, it's creme de cacao is just kind of like a, it's like a standard. Oh, I did say, I guess the, cre the creme thing, the cream that you caught onto earlier was the creme de cacao. It's not creamy at all. Yeah, there's like, like creme de banana, creme de cacao, creme de noyol, which I believe is just, um, hazelnut, maybe, if I'm correct in saying. They're just fancy ways of saying it's spicy sugary spirit mixed with flavor of the thing that is being parfumed i suppose i guess it's great yeah that the ellipses thing just harping on that for a moment is something that i have noticed with a lot of people i don't take it personally at all i was merely saying that in satire i got no problem if the ellipses is your thing it's like you're you're trailing off a thought and to be honest i trail off my thoughts all the time too i just don't like put the ellipses thing there it's grim cram de cacao interesting very interesting stuff indeed the next thing that we're going to need, in addition to the creme de cacao that we just added in there, is a half an ounce of ancho chili liqueur, which I'm very excited for. Because ancho chili liqueur is the only legitimately spicy spirit that I have in my collection. Specifically, it is ancho reyes, chili ancho liqueur. And the day that I found this in my liquor store, I was like, I have to snag this because I had never seen it there before. I was always on the lookout for it because I never had anything truly spicy. If anybody throws fireball at me, I'm going to swat it the other direction. Although, uh, between me and you, there is still fireball at this bar. Wait, actually, I'm going to confirm that. Is this fireball? Is this just like some other thing? <laughs> That's why it was next to the ancho chili liqueur. It is still, and forever will be, gasoline. All right. Hey, Rye, I started using the ellipses too on Slack, even as a Gen Z. It's just so convenient. It totally is. Fireball? Did this just turn into Dozens of Dragons? That gag, though, dude. Fireball! Fireball. I don't have anything to throw. Do I have a stress ball around here somewhere? I don't. Here's here's a. Can I reach that? Oh come on. Wait 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 wait. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna throw something. This is a roll of gorilla tape. Fireball. It actually kind of bounced. That was impressive. I wish y'all could have seen that. Wait, actually, could you have seen that? Hold on a second. Um, context. I have another angle, and it's on a boom arm, and it has. Full rotation abilities. Let's see if we can see the duck, the gorilla tape on the floor. This is me pouring the angle all the way around. Can we see it? Where's the duct tape? There it is. There it is. You can see it next to that plastic bag. That's kind of cool. I have now gained the ability to share with the world what lies in front of my bar. This is wonderful. Instant replay. Apparently you can do that. That is a thing that you can do. Um, I just don't know how to do it yet. Um, in any case. Ancho chili liqueur. It's spicy. No, not fireball spicy. A more refined type of spicy. If you can, if you want to refer to it that way. And we need a half an ounce of that. Which is not an insignificant amount of this liqueur. It does have a nice spice to it. And I would love to explore the spice of the ancho chili liqueur this week. But, for the first time in a while, I actually know what my theme is going to be next week. And if you want spicy stuff... It should come around next week too because it's gonna get <laughs> so so much worse you thought ancho chilies were spicy you ever heard of a carolina reaper oh yeah somebody found it somehow i realized that my network spreads far and wide and somebody in my close cocktail network wants to come on the stream and share it and i'm super duper excited actually kind of scared too Somebody might get hurt, but that's why we would be keeping, I guess, I guess water, like a lot of water and maybe some milk on standby. I don't really know what's going to happen. If they can sell it in a store, it can't be that bad, right? 
Anyways, <laughs> plastic bag, you heathen. It was holding my electronic. It was raining today. That's what happened. Green Mario looked like he had one many two mod Could you put pickles in alcohol and let it soak? Of course. Would it be fun for spicy flavors? Pickles and alcohol. Well, it's probably going to get a little bit of vinegary and might be kind of tasting like a vermouth or something like that. Are you going to make the ghost pepper spray co cocktail? Cam, this sounds terrifying. Would you mind sharing what the ghost pepper spray cocktail is? Because if it seems like we can do it, yes, of course we will. Um, I'll also say as well, not that I'm going to try to extort people for their channel points, but there's actually a channel point redemption where you can request cocktails now. Just saying, just dropping that there. We will also need three dashes of chocolate bitters. Sort, sweet, and simple. And I got cocoa bitters down here somewhere, and they're here. They're Woodford Reserve. Observe the reserve of the Woodford. Ooh. Ooh. Was it scary because of the artifacting, or was it scary because I was making the ooh sound effect? <laughs> the fact that I can do that now is something that I'm just not gonna get over for a while. Like, I'm gonna be constantly switching back and forth between those, because, like, it took me, like, it literally took me all weekend, and actually technically months of trying to figure out how the hell I was supposed to do that, and we did it. And when you do things, as I've tried to make more better for myself, if you do something and it's significant, be proud of it reward yourself for it really live in that because like good feelings i feel like can be a little hard to come by um so that's why we use alcohol sometimes three drops or three dashes i'm gonna use drops one two three that was about three quarters of a pipette just about i could request a drink or i could get two songs is it true 10k to request a cocktail how does that work like the same streamer for a future stream so i don't really know I don't really know how to workshop it yet, to be fair. Nobody's requested a cocktail yet, but let me let me be honest with you. We're all about honesty around here. I'm gonna stir this cocktail while uh, while we discuss this using a different stirring spoon. Um, so essentially, the way that I have it kind of like this, you could do a particular cocktail. You could do an idea of a cocktail. We can try to like figure something out together. If it fits in the theme, if we have the ingredients, we can totally try to make it, like absolutely. And for, to be fair, nobody should be spending their channel points on like a chance, like for example, like, oh no, 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 Oh, 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 maybe he's got this. I'm going to request it anyway and then be disappointed. Like, we'll try to work within it. That or the other idea is that a themed night could be just an entire stream dedicated to making cocktails that people really, really want to see. Um, I don't really know. Uh, it's just, This is a kind of a new thing. And so I thought we'll be able to kind of explore it together. I mean, all the stuff you success is for net based. And you did that already. I did that last week. That's true. We did. For, all for net based. Ooh. And I was saying last week, I'm very interested in those Fernet cocktails. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. If you put it in there, if it can't be done this time, that's okay. If not, whatever. One bottle of tequila. Oh, this is the ghost pepper thing. Please allow me to take a picture of that. I will also say as well, not necessarily, I will be taking pictures of all this stuff anyways, just so I have it. Um, but there's also, again, just to drop the Discord thing, absolutely no pressure if you're not a Discord person. Just completely ignore this. There's a drink channel there too, and I highly encourage people to throw whatever recipes and stuff you want out there. That's the whole point of it all. But you take a bottle of tequila, one to two ghost peppers, depending on how spicy you want, and a few slices of fresh ginger, also spicy, small cinnamon stick. Simply add all ingredients to a clean, empty jar, seal tightly, allow the mixture to sit for three to five days, then strain and enjoy. And use this tequila, so we don't have to like cut that down at all if we were using like Everclear or whatever. That is very nice. Excited to see someone redeem that cocktail recipe. It's basically just ghost pepper and used tequila. It basically is. Oh, we also need an orange peel for garnish. Um, so let me... I posted my Christmas coquito there. Your Discord is awesome. Whoop! Discord out. Okay, I need my chilled coupe glass. Let me grab that out of there. We will also need an orange that we are going to do a twist of. Um, let's make it happen. Um, let's see if I can get a cool uh, angle with this. Ooh. Ooh. We're gonna get to that in a hot second. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Move this. Ooh, ow. Okay, what a minute. Ooh, that's transforming. I had a scant bar spoon of it, but I'm already, I'm already tasting it. Let me see. I want to get a little bit closer in there. A little bit closer. Let's see. Angle that up a little bit. There we go. All right. All right. All right. Very, very good. Very good. We need that orange twist. I can put my book away. I'm gonna grab myself uh, a strainer, probably a little julep strainer. I got this recently as well. Uh, I'm not particularly familiar on how to use it, um, but I'm learning just like everybody else's. We're gonna pour that into our coupe glass, right up on top, as much as we can, all the way up to the top, and then we're going to garnish it 
with an orange twist. Where the twist at? Twist at, twist at, twist at. Well, I've got an orange, which ignore the ignore the ugly side of the orange. I have. Oh, don't fall! There's glass over there. I have my my thing. This is gonna look weird. Let's let's see. Let's try to see if I can do a nice close up of us peeling the orange. Sky's the limit now. This is gonna be a lot of experimentation. How good can we do it? Is that good? Ooh, that's a good one. I didn't catch it, but it's all right. That was good. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Very good there. Whoops, I whacked my microphone. Now, I'm gonna put it here. A little bit of artifacting there. We'll figure that out eventually. Give it a bit of a twist. Twisty, twisty. There we go. Just kind of plop that in. That's called cocoa smoke. I'm a chow says, first time for everything. By the way, hi, Cameron. Hello. Hello, everybody. Oh, hello. There's, I'm also up here in the corner, too. I forgot. I'm, I'm up here in the corner, too. It's great over here. Um, I will also say as well, again, because it's new, you can type exclamation point photo, and it will take a photo of the cocktail and put it into the Discord. I take photos of these things anyway, but if you want it for yourself to be able to download it and stuff, um, that's what we've got it there for. It's, uh, it'll take a picture of everything that's happening here right on the screen. I think that's pretty cool. See, you can tell he's young. He skipped the Matthew McConaughey inflection for that. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, I totally skipped that. Absolutely incredible. Photo, we did it. Do you want to learn a Spanish alcohol phrase? I do. Beers that are chilled so much before being served, since it's hot in Puerto Rico, they are called vestidas de... Vestidas de novia, dressed as a bride. Since they took, since they look white, your glass reminded me of it. It does, so it's cool. The phone angle actually has, I think, a more bright color spectrum on it. So I think the cocktails actually look nicer on the close-up than they do even when I, so I can also, uh, cause I'm a tech guy and I love to show this stuff off. I can zoom in on things. I have the ability to zoom in on stuff, but to be perfectly honest, I think it looks better at the at the up close angle and um maybe my zoom will become irrelevant that or maybe just everybody wants to see my face i don't really know well the the needs the needs of the situation will arise eventually you can also take a picture of anything it's true literally oh my god i went way too far <laughs> Hi there, everybody. Yeah, so what that command does is it will take a picture of whatever is being showcased on your screen right now, not necessarily what's on my screen. So it could be literally whatever. So thank you. Thank you for utilizing this ability. I, I'll admit, again, if you make something and you're really proud of it, really dive into it. Be, be proud of that. And, I, and I'm currently sitting in that level of a little bit of pride here, and maybe prideful is a little bit of a sin, but like, I'm really, really happy about that. And it looks like it's providing a really nice utility, hopefully, that everybody will be able to use. And if that's the case, if we can make everybody's lives easier or enhance it in some way, what it's all about. So Cocoa Smoke combines Mezcal, Creme de Caco, and ancho chili liqueur together with a little bit of chocolate bitters there. It is, as the book said, it's got the smoke, like the grassy smoke. Actually, I'm going to take it from the book itself. The zoom in is nice with the solid black background, though the other angle looked busier. I get that. I get that. Page 33. It was cocoa smoke. And I quote, Carrie Allen describes this as the power trio of chocolate, the grassy smoke of mezcal, and ancho chili pepper liqueur makes for a heady, sexy sip. And we're about to have a very heady, sexy sip. Is it wrong? I subconsciously heard the Krabby Patty training vid ad lib song when I started zooming in. I spilled. Oops. Oh! Ooh. Let's break that down, shall we? There are three very distinct things happening here. I taste a chocolate bar. I taste cocoa. Cocoa is very, very present. The sweet part has a flavor of cocoa. There is a smokiness to it. It is existing in a higher space in my mouth, almost as if I just kind of like inhaled something smoky. You know, you walk, you're walking by a fire and you catch a whiff of something and you open your mouth instead. That's what I get there. It's that kind of charcoal-y smoke stuff. And then the next thing that happens is the spicy, sorry, the sweetness becomes spicy because of the ancho chili liqueur in there. This is delicious. It's like, 
If anybody's ever been, the only the only um, um, analog that I have here is if anybody's been to Disney World, specifically the Mexico Pavilion, they sell these like spicy chocolates that you can buy by the pack. And it tastes like one of those, dare I say, probably better. I think it tastes a lot better than that. It's more, it's got a very obvious sweetness. It's got a smokiness that isn't present in those little like alcoholic cordials. Some of them are alcoholic and it's got a bite to it. And it's also, it's incredibly pleasant. Um, it's, it's not too spicy to the point where it's unpleasant. It's just spicy enough that like you can appreciate it. I don't like things that are spicy without flavor. Um, like like certain peppers are spicy without flavor. It's just burn, and I'm not a big fan of that type of stuff. But like something like a buffalo sauce, something like a let's say a spicy cilantro, I appreciate more because there's a kick there, but there's also a flavor that I can kind of like default to, which which I think this cocktail really does. Except the default is chocolate, and like, dude, it doesn't get any sexier than chocolate in a drink. Good song. Does it smell smoky too? Does it actually smell? How does it smell? I actually didn't smell these ones. Because the the uh, the mockingbird from earlier made me a little mucusy, and so my nasal cavity is a little blocked off, which affects my tasting of it ability too. It's not. It doesn't smell smooth, super smoky. Not for the most part. Is it campfire campfirey or more cigar esque? Campfirey. Not cigars. I don't think that they. I'm not getting any like tobacco, like kind of like cigarette cigarette cigar notes to it. Um. It's more, it's more, it more smells like wood as opposed to, let's say, like a tobacco-based plant. Um, is it, no scent, not really. I'm down there, we, uh, no, I'm there in a week and a half. So I can track that down. Ooh, very good stuff. Spicy cilantro, is that a thing? It is. You mean spicy soap? Spicy soap? Spicy cilantro? Spicy soap? Why are you eating the soap, Ricerone? You know, a little bit of exposition on me, personally. I was the kid who mixed all the shampoos and conditioners and body washes in the tub to see what they smelled like. And maybe I tasted them on occasion. Is it surprising that I eventually started doing the same thing with liquors? I don't think it is. Not very much. That's absolutely excellent. I like the cocoa smoke. It's interesting. I feel like I've had the cocoa smoke before. Like I have a distinct memory of myself behind this bar saying, cocoa smoke. Cocoa smoke. Smoke that is cocoa. And I don't have any recording of it anywhere. I thought I did. I don't remember. Very interesting. Cilantro tastes like soap. I'm part of the genetic anomaly. Interesting. Little Abe's little brother took a bite out of the bar of soap once too. Probably because it smelled awesome. Why wouldn't you? You live and you learn. I used to eat dirt. We were talking about that on Monday. Pika's a thing. In any case, that is absolutely excellent. I think for the most part, um, what happens to this cocktail is... It kind of, it's not watered down at all, but even as it's been sitting there for a little bit, I'm now getting a little bit less of the chocolate and a little bit more of the mezcal notes. There's a bit of a bitterness there. There's a bit of an earthiness there. Um, the, you know, it still falls back on that chocolate note, um, but the spicy is present, very present. I don't know what an ancho chili tastes like, so there's probably some kind of grassy peppery notes in there too, but I can't quite pick them out, but my palate is ever expanding. Not in a physical sense. Um, I haven't had braces or dental work like that done in many, 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 many years. And I'm happy about that. They love cilantro. Think about the taste and smell of soap. Uh, everybody's thinking about soap and toast and stuff like that. The brain just gets a little confused sometimes. Honestly, I will buy soaps that I think smell nice, and I think they smell nice because I think that they would taste nice. The fact that things smell the way they taste or the way they taste the way that they smell is not far flung. It is most definitely a thing. But that was really, really great. And that was Cocoa Smoke, which I actually did write on the board. I just remembered that I should be writing things on the board, and I did. And I'm very happy. And that's because somebody reminded me, this is a community effort. If we don't work together, things fall apart. I, I don't want to fall apart, guys. I'm not going to fall apart. I, I've got, I got a strong backbone. I don't have a very strong back, but I have a good backbone. Like, like metaphorically speaking, I suppose. So let's do a little bit of a roundup so far. What have we, what have we done so far? Uh, there are more cocktails to cover this evening. We're only in an hour and a half in. Um, so, and usually we go for at least two, almost three hours or so. And I'm out of a blast right now. So we're going to continue this. The first thing that we did, well, I guess I'll, I'll stick the book in the middle a little bit, like a, 
like that. So the first thing we did is I tried to do a little riff, a little variation on a cocktail called the Mockingbird. The Mockingbird uses tequila, creme de menthe, and lime juice. Um, I swapped out the usually a Blanco tequila for a Reposado tequila. You got a little bit more character there, more spiceful notes there, like vanilla because of like the oak that they used to age it in. Um, I instead of using creme de menthe, which is very straight, very minty uh, and sweetness, I used a mojito liqueur that was actually a gift from somebody who's here in chat right now. You know who you are. I'm very thankful for it. And I also added lime juice to it too. It was too, too limey. I wasn't a huge, huge fan of it. And so I wasn't gonna, I, I, I didn't continue drinking it. It's just kind of, kind of sit on the side until I actually want it there. Um, but that's all right. Smile. Oh, there was a photo taken. Eee. It's fun stuff. I should also stop slouching too. The next thing we did is we dove into the Tequila Plus Mezcal or Mezcal Plus Tequila Cocktails book by Robert Simonson, giving us a little context on Mezcal and Tequila. Just for a very quick rundown of some of the facts that stuck out to me is that Tequila usually finds its uh, finds its home in Jalisco, a part of Mexico. It can also be made in nine other different areas of Mexico as well, and it is made specifically with Blue Weber Agave. Uh, that's how you make your tequilas and stuff. And they grow, I think, on average, I think it takes about three years, three, 30 years for them to grow to the level where they are able to be like harvested and then processed accordingly. Mezcal, on the other hand, is kind of a broader category. It can be made with not just Blue Weber agave. It can be made with a bunch of different types of agaves, specifically Espadine agave, which I believe is the most type popular agave plant in Mexico. And agave, lo and behold, looks kind of like a spiky cactus succulent, but is actually more closely related to the asparagus than any other plant out there, which is kind of interesting. Um, tequila and mezcal in general are created usually by chopping off all the, um, I don't remember what the term is for the green parts of the agave plant. You get to the centerpiece, which is called the piña, which is where all the sugars and stuff are concentrated. And you can do a bunch of things to that piña, but it eventually ends in churning it up kind of making it into a, to a mush, which releases all the sugars and stuff, and you wind up fermenting it. And you will get tequila. Tequila comes in three different forms for the most part. I believe there's also technically a fourth. Comes in your Blancos, kind of white. You come in your Reposados and your Añejos, a bit more color to them. Usually corresponding to the amount of time that it spends aging in like a barrel. Um, the type of barrel is beyond my comprehension right now. I think it's oak, but I could be wrong about that. And then I believe Cristalino is a new thing. And that's like, like a Reposado or Añejo tequila, but there's none of the color. It's been like purified or something. I don't know. But I think that's pretty cool. Mezcal is cool. Mezcal is cool. And so I wanted to explore that. Do I need to teach you how to pro promote a book? Prop that thing up so we can see the cover. <laughs> this is the one. I'll do the other angle. Don't hurt me. Me and my family. Look at this book. I'm still getting used to this angle. Hold up. There we go. Mezcal and tequila. This book here. It's not my book. Not my book. Boop. Click the button and I switch back. It's great. By Robert Simonson. I picked it up in a gift shop. Good stuff. Mojito Don Q. I missed it. Oh, we got the stuff. Rum has similar stuff too. At least Don Q does. Crystal Añejo, etc. Very cool stuff. I think I also have the passion fruit one down here too. It's true. Um, I didn't really like it, but that's because of the way that I mixed it. I didn't think it was going to be a very popular one for me. So I dug my own grape there. The next thing that we did was one called uh, Gunmetal Blue. And it combined, there was mezcal in there. There was blue curacao in there. There was lime juice in there. There was cinnamon syrup in there and there was also something else i want to look back for it what was it what was it it's a blue one. Oh, and we also put a little orange wheel on top of it it's not an egg i promise you that oh and peach brandy there's peach brandy in there too which you can actually taste peach brandy combined with mezcal is a very very nice flavor combo it really rounds things out and provides a sweetness that you can like recognize it's not just like oh it's sugary sweet it's like peach sweet there's a specific fruit note that you can pick out there. And that's really cool. Because to be honest, when I have blue curacao drinks, I don't really pick out orange as, as the flavor. Nor do I pick out blue also as the flavor. And then we just covered cocoa smoke, which was mezcal, creme de caco, and ancho chili decor. It's spicy, it's chocolate, it's mezcal smoky, and it's sexy. Not my words, the words of the people. And who are we to argue against the words of the people? I mean, that book is great, but check out those rings. Ooh, my rings, indeed. All these rings have stories, too. LOL, sorry, I was a kid. I was a community access floor director for 12 years. Old habits die hard. That's pretty cool. I did say it was a community effort. We are all, it's all about the community. Mostly because I'm beginning to realize if you're trying to hold yourself to the status of perfection by doing everything by yourself, you're missing out on a huge aspect of this thing we call humanity. 
And who am I to distance myself from the species that I identify as? I'm going to take back this gunmetal. I really didn't drink it as much as I thought I was going to. Ooh, that's changed up a little bit. It's a little more sour now. I'm getting more of the um, the sour notes from that now. It's kind of sour, a little bit of bitterness, but still got that sweetness. Yeah, that's still that's still a favorite of mine. Put the barrel coaster. Put this cocoa smoke off to the side. Let me put it right next to. This is gonna be the undesirable part of the table. We're gonna put this in the desirable part of the table. It's gonna go right next to Pikachu. Pikachu's totally into this. I know Pikachu's kind of an electrical type, but like honestly. I think Pikachu can mess around with some fire, some smoke every once in a while. A little bit of poison fire action going on there. I believe it. I wouldn't put it past Chonkachu to be able to handle handle their liquor. Not at all. Now take a little bit of the blue drink and mix it with a little yellow drink and taste. Mm, I don't know. You're going to have to encourage me to do that. I'm not quite ready for it yet. But we're going to move on to another cocktail, though, because we have more cocktails that we want to cover. So we shall move on to something different. I'm not going to go back to the Mezcal Tequila book this time. I am going to go into... Am I not going to go? Yes. No, no, no. I'm going to go to a different thing entirely. Actually, it's not from one of my books. It's from a, a website called Curiata.com. There is absolutely no promotion happening here, but I did just order liquor online for the first time the other day, and it's supposed to be shipped here tomorrow. I don't know how well that's going to go. So um, right now, I want to think that it's a pretty good investment of my time and financial assets and stuff but i guess we'll see later on i should be getting some campari in the mail and a couple of other things i've had my eye on specifically a maro nonino i gotta get that in my bar i finally found it because i'm very limited with my access here in philadelphia and i just don't feel like driving out to delaware or new jersey mostly because anna and i share one car and she has to go to work every day so i don't get to use it very often that's okay but in any case, Curiata.com, the recipe I, I got from it was called Cinnamon Girl, and it combines Reposada tequila, Jamaican rum, lime juice, cinnamon syrup, Angostura orange bitters, which I have, and then an orange cut into wedges. Essentially what we're doing is we're kind of taking all the pieces that we have discussed already. You got your lime juice in there, you got some cinnamon syrup in there, you got a Reposada tequila in there, but we're going to add something different to it this time. Mm. Excuse me. It's going to be a rum instead. We're actually going to split the base in this case. And I say split the base because we're using two different base spirits. Although it's, there's two ounces of tequila and literally a quarter of an ounce of rum in there. So either we're adding that for color. We're adding that for a little bit of that quote unquote Jamaican funk or something else. I've never tried it before. Uh, so we're going to give it a shot. And the instructions for this are that we muddle two orange wedges in a shaker, add in the rest of the ingredients, ice and strain, strain into a filled ice-filled rocks glass, and then garnish. However, the picture that I have access to here, um, which again, I have another camera angle, so I'm going to show you the picture that I was provided with. The picture looks like this. That doesn't look like a rocks glass to me. That looks like a wine glass. Uh, and so the question now is, do I follow the written instructions or do I follow the pretty picture? And I'm a very pretty picture kind of person, so I kind of want to follow the pretty picture the way that it was portrayed to me um, through my panel screen here. Um, although, I, 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 I don't know. I don't know what I want to do there. All the paper planes are made with Montenegro. Ooh, that's the thing. I had to, I had to decide between Amaro Montenegro or Amaro Nonino. And I think I got the Nonino. Or actually, I might have gotten the Montenegro. Wait! What do I have coming in the mail? Actually, you know what? We're going to wait till next week. I don't know what's coming, but it'll get here tomorrow, supposedly. We'll see. I I'm starting to doubt myself now. I've never seen a bottle of Nonino in North Carolina. Woo! Something a little, something a little different there. My stream chat is now being a little, little, a little annoying. Did I miss any chats over there? I, prob I probably did. Oh my god. Pull up the manager. Can I see chat history? Reconnecting? Oh man. All right, so as a current resident, I have to just have to agree. LOL, we're in consensus. That's not a rocks glass. It's not a rocks glass. We are all in agreement there. Um, literally, don't buy a Google Surface. Or, I'm sorry, a, a Microsoft Surface Go. This computer sucks. It's actually bulging because the lithium ion battery is now expanding. And now I hold on. I'm gonna pull up my phone. I might have missed a couple of chat messages. I am very very apologetic about that. But I think I think we got everything, for the most part. I apologize if I missed something. My hardware is being stupid. Ugh. Oh! Ugh. 
we're doing great. We're doing great here. I saw that message. I now have my other phone pulled up as chat. So we're just going to use that for a little while. The computer is quite literally shitting itself. So we're going to go with that. Um, missed message. Oh, God. No one should have to drive to New Jersey. <laughs> Five months subscribe with three month badge. Gift your leader more than awesome. All of my paper plays are maybe not a Let's go wild. Thank you so much for doing that. Oh, my God. You did not have to do that, but I greatly appreciated that you did. Paper plane. I've never tried a paper plane. New Jersey. That's my home state, bruh. Um, I go back to see my family and stuff. That's great. Let's go wild. Let's go absolutely crazy. <laughs> my recipes are still here, though. So I'm just not, I'm not even going to look at the Google Chrome tab anymore. If the computer doesn't die, it will be okay. Anyway, you're cinnamon, you're cinnamon girl. You're cinnamon kind of girl. What do you do? We're gonna grab ourselves a shaker. We're gonna worry about the glass later. Let's see, if we feel the wine glass filled with ice, we're gonna go with the wine glass filled with ice. If we feel a rocks glass filled with ice, we're gonna do the rocks glass filled with ice. Let's just feel it. We're gonna judge by the color. That's what we're gonna do. But for sure, we definitely need a shaker. So let's go get our shaker. That was pretty cool. Community effort. Yeah, yeah. Here's a kazoo for community. This is, this is the community kazoo. Whenever, whenever we see examples of quality community collaboration, we will scream into the community kazoo. Thank you, community. This, this kazoo is for you. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. No, no, no. Thank you. No, you're welcome. Let's get some ice and put that in our shaker glass and let that come up to room temperature. I need a big cube and a little cube. Let's do that. I've got one more big cube in this mold over here. Drop it into big tin, little tin. All right, looks like it's going to be the little tin. That didn't want to go in there very well. Been a little difficult there. And the little cubes as well. That will eventually come to temperature, I suppose. Put the ice back in, and we'll hopefully be able to conserve that later. We're going to need tequila. I would redeem my party hats for a Kazunity prize. A Kazunity prize? Ooh, you're right. That could be a community thing, the kazoo. I, I bought this at I bought this at a um, uh, at a concert that I went to um, with a with a family member of mine. Uh, the band's name, or I guess the artist's name, because I think it's just a person, but there's also people out there too called Cave Town. They make nice music. They're known for I think the most prominent song is Lemon Boy, and I think it goes something like like a Lemon Boy and me, we gotta get along together. Something da da da. It's actually pretty easy being uh, with a sour boy like him. So I got myself a lemon friend. It's a good one. The concert was it was really really nice. It was a very it was a nice prideful concert. Everyone was really really kind. Everything was like very very comfy. It was it was a great experience. I really really liked that. I don't know if I would spend party outs on that. Kind of torn between saving for a cocktail recipe or the beanbag smut reading stream. Yes, yes. For those who don't know, I am fully intending on reading smut on stream. However, I have incentivized it. I like that. So interestingly enough, my stream manager here doesn't tell me when people um, um, redeem their points on stuff like that, which is kind of wacky. Um, but that's because Twitch is weird and wildly inconsistent. So that's just how it's going to be. No. Ah, oh, I was about to... I was about to recover the stream thing so I can look at it. Anyways, if you're if you're a fan of, I mean, even if you're not a fan of smut, I want to do it. I want to, but I'm not going to unless it, unless we incentivize it. So that's the thing there. I've incentivized it for you. We need two ounces of their reposado tequila. They recommend siete leguas. Siete leguas. I don't know what leguas is. Can I have somebody who speaks Spanish in chat tell me what leguas is? I know siete is seven. Oh, I have to change the recipe. Well, we're getting a quick translation. Thank you in advance to the community members. We would not be here without you. Um, I'm going to swap this out over here. S <laughs> Lemon boy, cinnamon girl and me, we love to get along together. I always forget how to spell cinnamon. There's only one M. It's actually pretty easy spelling cinnamon, but for some reason I always fall short. So that's why I have a lexiconal reference so that I don't forget. I donated the max of 2k as well. Seven leagues. What kind of smut would you read? It's called Ice Planet Barbarians. I borrowed it from a friend and it's been sitting in my apartment for a good two years now and I just kind of feel bad that it's sitting around. So it's a book he borrowed from, a, uh, from their best friend, from D Disney Queen's best friend. Um, yeah, that's, that's basically what I said. That's what I'm saying. Two ounces. Oh, God, two ounces. Oh, two 
Swans is a tequila. I'm like simultaneously doing phone duty over here and Google Chrome duty over here and cocktail duty over here. Woo. Wild. Anyway, we got some Reposado tequila in there, specifically two ounces or about 60 milliliters of that stuff. Oh my goodness. I saw BF and was briefly confused. Oh, because Disney Queen is my fiance and if she had a boyfriend, certainly you'd think I'd know about it. And technically I am the closest thing to a boyfriend she has. So like, right? And I was like, oh, maybe it's just old. Either way, smut, huh? Huh. Also, because I spent $200 on a beanbag, and like if I didn't put that on camera at least once, I feel like I'd actually be wasting money. Sip. I sucked on the orange coin. The orange coin is now getting too big for its britches. I have to. Yo. Check this out. It's blue. Ooh, don't spill. <laughs> the orange has turned a little blue over there. Kind of wild. Well, that's now hindering my ability to drink the drink, so I'm gonna put that away and clean up my hands. Oh my god, there we go. Indeed, indeed. I now have visibility, I now have full convenient ability on chat now. Um, the Surface Go has recovered, and hopefully it never goes away again. I'm still gonna put my phone there in general, just to, just to make sure that I have a reference that's gonna stick around, just in case something goes wrong. So that's like the fourth technical difficulty that happened on stream today. Um, I'm not insecure about it, I'm honest. It doesn't usually happen. But whatever, you know, whatever happens. The next thing that we're gonna need in our cocktail, the cinnamon girl, is a quarter an ounce of Smith & Cross, specifically Jamaican rum. I don't have that. So we're gonna use the closest Jamaican rum that I have, um, which is Myers. It's the dark bottle. Dark bottle of rum there. Consumption, what am I consuming? Mmm, I'm gonna take a drink of this. I just put all my party hats towards smut. I have full faith we will reach this goal. Absolutely. You know, it's weird. I thought that I'd be able to see like what our progress is toward the goal and I can't see it on my dashboard. Um, so I don't know how far, oh wait, actually if I click this button, wait, oh, there it is. 19% baby. We're getting there. We're getting there. I honestly didn't know like how to properly set that up because um, I didn't realize, like I find it really, it's weird. Why does Twitch say that you can only put um, 2,000 points to it. Like, I know there are people out there who have like 100,000 and stuff, and this was specifically meant for people who got a lot to equalize with those who have a little bit, but like, apparently, Twitch, the Twitch overlords, like, like, Bumfrey Bezos has to be like, no! Artificial restrictions! Um, so, I mean, sorry guys, I guess you're just gonna have to come back during the next stream and, don and donate your party hats again. Uh, it's just, it's not my choice. It's just the way that it has to be. Oh my goodness. I did that consumption. Oh my goodness. Then so the next thing we're gonna need and include so we put tequila in there now and we put a little little bit of rum in there. It's really not that noticeable. However, things did happen. What just what just occurred? Ooh, what was that? 8400 party hats has been raised. Oh, it put a little thing on there. That's cool. I've never seen that appear in chat before. Then again, this is the first time I've done a little community goal like that. That's kind of cool. Look at everybody coming together for the community challenge. This is beautiful. You are beautiful. Thank you for that. This is great. I can't believe everyone wants to encourage this endeavor. I'm honored. The next thing we're gonna need is three quarters of an ounce of lime juice. Uh, I've been kind of going through the same container over here. I'm really happy that I have a lot of this lime juice over here because there's been a lot of it kind of sitting in my fridge and every time I think to myself, I gotta go to the store for cocktail reagents, I'm like, no, 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 don't buy more limes. Unless you need a lime peel, you don't need them. There's a lot of lime juice in the freezer. So I'm using all the lime juice that we have in the freezer. That's three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of that lime juice which I still have so much of because I misread a recipe once and bought 30 limes, not realizing that I did not nearly need that much. I was about to say, we'd have to hit the goal already. You had me going for a second there. Serious though. Yeah, I, no, 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 no. This is what I do, it's what I do. Yeah, I definitely want to, I definitely, like, I'll, uh, another thing too, like, I want to do the smut thing on stream because like, I kind of want to know, because if I, I think of it this way, there's no way that I'm gonna read an entire book in a single stream. Maybe, I'm not a very fast reader. 
But like, I want to see how far I can get with it. And then hypothetically speaking, if I don't finish it all in one stream, then reigns the question, do we set up another challenge to continue for the next episode? Or do we just, we just have to do it? We just, we just have to keep going for it. I don't know. These are open questions. <clears throat> Cameron with the next enterprises is slowly but surely growing. I'd say we're at a very, very small startup phase right now. And as such, people's opinion, people are only just starting to realize that they can express their opinions and stuff to be able to influence what happens over here. This cool, oddly enough, this doesn't just exist because of my hands in the pot. Kind of all of our hands in the pot. Because what happens here is kind of like a conglomeration of everybody's thoughts together. And I think I'm doing pretty good facilitating that right now. But honestly, who knows? <laughs> I'm just the I'm, I'm the bubble head that's making cocktails. That's all we got there. Okay, good night, says Ricerone. Thought I'd dump all my points before bed. That's great. Disney Queen will check in next stream. They can send more. You should get a funnel for that. Lil Abe wants a funnel so bad. Community kazoo time? A funnel? Wait, what do we need a funnel for? I have a funnel. I missed the context of the funnel. I will keep the funnel there for a moment. Excellent. We also need three quarters of an ounce of cinnamon syrup. I don't know why I didn't grab it all at the same time. I like my cinnamon syrup because it exists in flascular form and it's great. Three quarters of an ounce or about 22 milliliters of that. Oh my God. Oh! Do that thing with your vocal cords. Speak with the kazoo. For pouring from big containers to small containers. Oh, I understand that now. Can I speak with a kazoo? Can I? Mm, I can speak with the kazoo, Eric. Let's do it the other direction. Because if I do it the other direction, I'm not rushing through those eardrums. Hey there, I'm Mickey Mouse. <laughs> this is interesting. Three quarters, of, <clears throat> three quarters of an ounce of cinnamon syrup or about 22 milliliters of that into our cocktail shaker. I did not think that this was possible. However, apparently it really is. Thank you for this interesting idea, Disney Queen. You weirdo. I respect it. Let's put our cinnamon syrup away. It's getting kind of, kind of saliva y in there. I just wanted to hear how bad it was. Something freaking out. I feel like we should pay to turn that off. Anyway, it's now floor kazoo. I was growing tired of that. That was interesting. Hey, you know what? That was, hey, that's pretty cool. Or is it? I can't, it's upstairs. <laughs> Y'all let's, let's have mute. Let's have mute, ooh. What were we doing again? Cinnamon girl, cinnamon girl, cinnamon girl, cinnamon girl, cinnamon girl, cinnamon girl. We put all the ingredients that we need in there. We also need a dash of orange bitters. And an orange, cut into wedges. Uh, I was supposed to muddle, I realize now, I was supposed to muddle orange wedges in my cocktail shaker first before adding the other liquid reagents there. I kind of missed that, but it's never too late. So I'm gonna take the orange over here. I'm gonna grab, let's say two, we'll grab three slices. We'll grab three slices of that. And we will put that into our, uh, into our shaker here. I got some ugly sides of this and a couple of stickers on this. So let me take the stickers off first. I'm gonna put them on my neck. Because why not? It's a performance here. Damn it. Let's do... Let's do one slice. Let's do two slice. Let's make this very orangey. Let's make a third slice on here. There we go. We'll take the other slices, the edge slices, and I'm going to put that off to the side. Let's put that in and muddle it. And then we need a dash of our orange bitters there. Let's do it. Mmm. Stickers. Mmm. Glue. Mmm. The sound that you make when you say, mmm, mmm. Anna said saliva. Why? Ew. Mmm. 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 <laughs> saliva, you say. Add the orange bitters. Mm, bit, orange bitters you add, yes. A dash you'll add. Mmm. One. All you get that is, mmm. Angostura, mmm. Preferred brand yours is Angostura, mmm. Anyways, <laughs> Yoda ASMR stream win. Ew. Maybe I read the entire book of smut in Yoda's voice. That sounds terrible. 
Or, 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 wait, wait, wait. I have an idea. Synergies, right? So during the book stream, when we get to the book stream, because we will, if somebody activates the voice modulation mode, we can read a whole chapter in a voice, specifically a Yoda voice. See, see, that's the thing. The cogs are turning. Like, see, this is the thing. When everybody puts their minds together, everyone's cogs are turning at the same time, it gets a little messy. But it gets messy at the bar anyways, so we'll just clean it up. That's why I've got the dirty bucket. The dirty bucket cleans up all the messes. Muddle your orange slices together. Oh, that is... Oh, wait, 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 wait. We gotta get an angle for that. How long are these chapters? I don't know. I've never read the book. Let's bring the other angle over here. And take a look. Wait a minute. I can... Ooh. 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 I can actually put this over top. I have full vertical ability. Hey yo. Hey yo, hey yo, hey yo. That's so cool. I was not able to do that previously. Look at how juicy it is in there. My goodness gracious. This is awesome. I be lurking. I need to set up my stream. Yo, go get him, PZK Cosplay. That sounded juicy. I love this angle. Over the roundabout. The rains will make you holler out and send the day away. Uh, uh, Jojo reference. Oh, I'm not really keeping that. All right, I, uh, I gotta learn how to use this angle. This is a new angle. This is the first stream where this angle has made its first appearance. So I gotta learn how to use it. Um, it's like a tool. I you just how to learn your tools. Anyway, that's pretty juicy. Yeah, photo. Oh, did we catch it? Did we catch it? I think we did. Hopefully we did. Dude, the fact that this other angle is kind of, it's kind of artifacty sometimes and looks a little weird makes me think that one, like one of these times, the, fi the picture that pops up on the other side is going to look really, really janky. But that's okay. I'm going to put you on the side because I don't know if I need another muddle muddler again. Oh my gosh. I don't know how to time it. So it should be, so I guess, yeah, it's a, it's a little weird. I'll leave this here for just a hot second more, just so if we uh, take another one, if we'd like to, it's a little weird, right? So there's, there's a delay between chat to here. There's a delay between this camera angle and my actual stream setup. There's a lot of different delays and stuff to kind of figure around with. And honestly, it's not an exact science anyway. I think oddly enough, um, I'll go back to the other screen there because I see that the photo was taken, that there's, so for the, the new camera angle, the latency, the delay that we experience there just to get into the, the semantics of it all is variable. The a delay that occurs between this camera and the computer is not consistent versus between my microphone and the computer versus the camcorder that I have in the computer. Those are delays that are constant so I can properly plan for them. The other one, from what I can tell, is not something that I can easily plan for yet. However, there might be just a technological piece that I'm missing there. Um, if anybody's familiar with IV Cam, uh, that's the app that I'm using to be able to set this up. It's by E2Esoft. If anybody's familiar with that and uh, want to pop in your opinions, I'd greatly appreciate it. I thank you for that. Cinnamon girl, put it all together. Put your ice in there. We had ice kind of chilling in this glass for a little while, so it's probably lit off a little bit of water. I'm going to dump that water as the ice has finally come up to temperature. There's not that much of it. And then we'll pop that together. Give it a slap. Why not? And give it a bit of a shake. This is the cinnamon girl. And as such, we're going to do the cinnamon girl dance, which goes a little something like the way we normally shake things. But we're going to add like a little bit of a hip flare to it, which you can't see. Because Wait a minute. Hold up a second. Hold on. I was going to say you can't see because it's behind the bar. This is the first time anybody is going to have proof that I actually wear pants behind this bar. Here comes the other angle. We're going to set it up properly. We can see that there's a little hip flare going on here. Maybe? Maybe? Can we see the hip flare? Oh yeah, we can! People can see my pants now! I'm wearing jeans today. I usually don't. Cinnamon girl with a little hip pop. Oh my god, you got to seal first. Got to seal. Ooh, that's really, that's, that's gushy there. We go for it. We're in it now. We can't turn back now. This smells awesome, actually. Anyway, that's my, um, that, that's my mildly suggestive content for the stream. <laughs> that was interesting. I gotta clean my fingers a little bit. That was, that was a little messy. The, the hip the hip poppage a little messy the cocktail shaking also a little a little messy I get that <laughs> I like how the camera freaks out 
Is that good? I really want to patch that out, but if it kind of helps, it kind of helps, you know? Eventually, we'll, if I had my way, I will eventually patch it out. Um, I still gotta, I gotta figure things out. Again, it's a little baby. It's a little baby utility that we've just learned how to use. It's trying to figure out how to walk. It's trying to figure out how to crawl. It's trying to figure out how to run, but it hasn't figured out how to open its eyes yet, really. Although I guess technically it has because this is the way it is. The camera just can't handle that hip flare. Okay, so now we've mixed, we've shaken up our, our cinnamon girl. Just as a reminder, this cocktail says to put it into a rocks glass. It reads to put it into a rocks glass with a bunch of rocks in it. However, the picture clearly shows a wine glass. I don't usually use wine glasses on stream for the most part. Not many cocktails call for it. I'm inclined to use the glass. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk all the way around the bar to go get a wine glass. But if somebody tells me to do it otherwise, all my walking will be for nothing. Although I'm going to do it anyways. Hi, I wasn't gone for very long. I'm just in front of the bar now. I'm going to grab a wine glass. Which wine glass? Should it be a character? It's going to be a character glass? Um, it's going to be a character glass. Um, well, yeah, we're putting a shit ton of water into or a bunch of uh, ice in it. I think. Yeah, you know what? We're gonna use one of the custom glasses. I'm feeling it. I'm feeling it. We're gonna use a custom glass. Let's get our camera angle set up. This is a glass that was painted by my dearest. Let's change that around. Bring it over here. See what we got going for us. Adjust that angle just a tad. Make it a little more um, visible. Put it there. This is my glass that I'm working with. It's got a little, it's got a little flare on it. Looking pretty good. I'm gonna back that up just a tad. Just a tad. Actually kind of tall. Let's move it there. And here. There we go. Trying our best this there. Ooh, I like the flare glass. Absolutely tangled. Yeah. So when my fiance and I would go on vacation to uh, the Disney Bureau Beach Resort, they would have like uh, glass painting stuff. And we'd play, paint ceramic tiles. We'd paint wine glasses and whatnot. It's really, really cool. I like it. Actually, you know what? This is perfect. This is perfect. Um, we have to fill it up with a bunch of ice. So I have this um, Disney ice mold here with a couple of different um disney shapes and whatnot we got a balloon we got mini we got mickey's pants mickey himself a uh, a castle so i'm gonna try to fill this up with a shit ton of ice and i'm gonna use literally all the disney ones and see how far that gets us and then use the lame ice i guess i'll use the uh the circle ice because i got kind of quite a bit of that and i don't usually use that either Boop. Boop. will we be able to fill it all up that is the question oh do we have to do any other garnishes here it's called Cinnamon Girl. Do we have to, like, garnish it with Cinnamon Wedge? Um, to make the cinnamon syrup, there's instructions for it. Garnish with an orange peel. Oh, I actually do the, do the orange peel, too. That makes sense. That makes total sense. So I gotta get an orange back, too. Alright, well, I'm out of my Disney. Um, I'm out of my Disney ice cubes. Let's go for the circle ones. Oh, I apparently only had... Oh, I got three of them. This is my cocktail, so I'm just gonna use the little... I'm gonna use the little scraps, too. Just a wee little bit. There's a ball. Oh, there are four. Incredible. There's another ball. There we go. It's completely filled up with ice. It's literally to the brim with ice. I can't put more ice into it. I mean, I can. I'm just not going to. Now what we're going to do is we're going to strain over the top. I need me a strainer. Let's get a strainer. Pop that top off. Put it to the side. Strain over top. The ice cubes and the two purple dots in the sun look like a face. Dude, I love it. There's actually not... Oh, is there a lot of liquid in there? How much liquid is there in there? Shake that up a little bit more. I think there's more. I think there's more. It's just hiding from us. Dude, it's all about seeing the face and things that you normally otherwise wouldn't. Yeah! All right. All right, and we need to garnish that with an orange peel, it seems. Let me clean my shakers up. I'll put that up to the side. I might need to use that one more time, so I might have to clean it up. Where's my other orange? I got a backup orange. Backup orange. Backup orange. There we go. We'll give that a... Oh, I didn't wash this one yet. Hold on. Let me do a quick little wash. It's a wash, folks. It's a wash. Kind of give it a little bit of a rub. Do a little peel on it. Put it in the camera angle, Cameron. There we go. Peel it. There we go. I don't know how to end an orange peel. I, I haven't quite figured that out yet. 
drop that inside. A beauty! A she a beauty, I think. A tutti she a beauty, maybe? I don't know. She beautiful to me. That's my cinnamon girl. I don't, there are many, there are many out there, but this one is mine. I think I'm gonna put a straw in there too. Makes sense, do I have any orange straws? I got a yellow one. I got a yellow bendy straw, so. In classic bendy straw fashion. Put a bendy straw in there. Has cinnamon girl taste. Mmm. Mmm. It's very, very orange forward. It's nice. It's kind of smooth too. The the more cinnamony notes are a little long. Oh, well, well, actually, no, that, that's in there. It's in there a little bit. So I was getting a little bit confused, right? Because previous, other, all, a lot of the recipes that we've done previously actually have a little bit of the, um, like a spicy component to it. And so most of them have had some sort of smoke or spice component to it. And I still have a spice component here. And I was like, oh, that's just the same thing that we've done normally. But like, there is no mezcal in this. There's no like anything smoky or anything spicy in here. So I'm still getting that kind of spice note to it. So that must be the cinnamon pop at its head in there, which is actually quite nice. It's like a, like cinnamon and orange is not really a combo that I imagined together, but this kind of tastes like, there's a lot of like orange juice in there because I muddled up a bunch of those orange slices. Um, it's very much like, a, it's kind of mimosa-like. Except instead of being bubbly, it's got the same sweetness of a, as a mimosa, but instead of being bubbly, there's this alcoholic angle to it. A little bit of a, a, a weirdness, if you will, just because tequila has a very like particular aroma, particular taste to it that I'm actually getting out of this. This is a tequila, it feels like almost a tequila equivalent to a mimosa, except there's other stuff in there as well that's kind of sweetened the deal up. There was, uh, what, the cinnamon in there, uh, there was the lime juice in there, so it's more sour. Um, it's also got the rum in there too. The the rum is lost on me. It's um, it's it's kind of lost on me. Whoa! It changed color. Did it change color? It was kind of orange. Oh, I guess it's kind of yellowish now. Hmm. As the ice kind of combined together, I am a witch. Burn me. So, so deal out sick burns to your bartender. It's basically like a tip. Um, um. Although except except he burns alive at the stake. It's it's pretty much the same thing. That's very, very good. Actually, you know, there's a, there's another... As I'm taking more sips of this... And that's not unpleasant at all. That's good. It is very, very... I'll, I'll put it this way. It's very orangey. It's got an excellent sweetness to it. And there's another angle that... It could be the little bit of rum that's in there. It could be the two ounces of the Reposada tequila. I can't quite piece it apart, but... It's not obviously one or the other, if that makes sense at all. There's a little bit of a, uh, like a molassesy sweetness there that I think is supposed to be coming from that Myers rum in there. Although I think that's just coming from the cinnamon syrup, but it's, it's good. There's, there's good stuff here. It's good. Please don't immolate the bartender. The booze will go with them. This is true. Please trust the chow in chat. If you immolate the bartender, all of this goes bye bye. All of it. Except for the tonic water. Well, ex except for the club soda. That shit don't burn. And I don't think the Jägermeister burns either. That just like congeals. Becomes runny. It's kind of like tar. And I don't want to go there. <laughs> Immolate is a good word. So is conflagrate. That also represents a fire. A great conflagration, they say. It's a very, very fun word. It's great. It's great. Awesome. Well, we made another cocktail. It was called the Cinnamon Girl. And the Cinnamon Girl... Cinnamon Girl knows how to deliver. That's That feels a little suggestive. That's really good. I would say, in my personal opinion, it's not super duper alcoholic. I think it kind of hides the tequila, the tequila very well. Usually tequila is very, very obvious to me. If there's tequila in a cocktail, I'm like, oh, I can taste that there. And to be honest, it is, at least in my opinion, well hidden. Although, I have a very skewed perspective on that. Because some people, like, they're like, no alcohol at all. If there's a little bit in there, they are going to detect it. I'm not one of those people. My fiance is one of those people. My buddy Glenn is one of those people who should be making an appearance next week, too crossing my fingers um but that's that's good stuff that's good stuff i i particularly enjoy this this feels like very if i had to describe like where i'd be enjoying this this is like a very vacation -y cocktail very um not tropical in the same way like a tiki cocktail which is usually more rum or like an agricole based but tropical in like a i guess southern well if we're talking like mexico and stuff it's not 
specifically the tropics. But like, there's Jamaican rum in there and whatnot. I think Anna's vacuuming down there. Is that picking up on the microphone? Hmm, I don't really know. Anna's vacuuming, it seems. I can hear it very clearly. It's good stuff. I feel like all my straws are broken because I can't really like sip out of this. I had a very, very hard time with that. <laughs> Excuse me for a moment. I need to drink some water. You can't hear it, don't worry, but you just did for a second. Well, which one is it, Annie? It's okay. If it gets picked up, you know, all things considered, just to... Just a full, full disclosure here, I live in an apartment with my fiance. There's not that much space. We have to continue to coexist. There's not like a studio space or anything like that. If you're very, very curious, this is the space that we work with. This is this is this is just a corner of my living room, basically. Hi everybody. It's all the behind the scenes stuff. Every once in a while we showcase that because we're very proud of it. It's cool stuff. We're down with it. What was that emote? Oh, it's a disco ball! Is it a disco ball? The hip flares would have been more obvious this time around, but alas. Um, let's see. We're about at like the two hour mark. I'm still feeling pretty good. Um, we might actually, so like usually what I do is I'll either go for a particular time period or I'll go till I run out of recipes. I might just run out of recipes this time because I picked out like 10 different recipes. Um, a couple of them I can't make because I ran out of the ingredients that I needed to make them. So we'll just see how far we can go with it. I'm having a good time. Your living room is like half of Chow's downstairs. This is a good thing. So technically, the space that you just witnessed is about half of my living room. I and my whole quote-unquote studio space take up like half of my living room. Conveniently enough, if you were here as well, if you walked that away, you'd find a couch. If you walked that away, you'd find the TV. If you walk a little bit that way, you'll find a staircase that goes downwards that is hidden by the television. If you were to take the television and boop it, it would fall over and completely fall down to the floor down below, which is actually kind of hilarious. It's never happened before, but we had this little like doll of Anna from Frozen who kind of sits on top of it and holds a wee bar, a wee um, motion bar in place, um, and she's been knocked over before. She's just precariously placed. It's just how it's going to work there. It's great. We love it. So let's see. I'm going to look, go into my recipe collection and I'm going to see what else we can create. Cause, uh, I kind of, we've gotten far enough into it that like, I had like a repertoire of like, I know what we're going to do. Um, and I know what we're going to do next, uh, but I've honestly forgotten. So I'm just going to flip through and see what else that we have that we can, we can do. Um, I'll just kind of open it up to the crowd for a little bit. I think we'll probably do one or two more cocktails. Probably just one. I think this one will probably take me a little while. But if anybody's yet got any ideas of what to do with mezcal or tequila, any recommendations and stuff. I know there was a message out there about how to do like a, it was like a ghost pepper, like um, infusion thing uh, with tequila. I don't have any ghost peppers, unfortunately. Um, but we'll get to the spicy stuff next week. Let me look through my recipes and see what else we have. We did the cinnamon girl, did cocoa smoke, did gunmetal blue. Um, I see Johan goes to Mexico, which uses mezcal. Lemon juice, oh, I did pick up lemon juice specifically for that. And then some, ooh, ooh, actually, yes. I wanna do this one because it's cool. Um, it uses a lot of Angostura bitters, which is something that you don't usually do. Um, so we're going back into the Mezcal and Tequila book. I'm gonna take this and put it off to the side. I'm gonna write where our next recipe is on the board behind me. This is a good one, this is a good one. So it's going into the good corner. Let's see, good corner gets good stuff. Excellent, excellent, excellent. So these are the good drinks we've found so far. Cinnamon Girl and Cocoa Smoke and the Gunmetal Blue. Um, the Mocktail, which wasn't any of the ones on the menu really um, sucked. So, but that was all my mistake. That, that Nobody can be blamed for that except for me. Um, but this next one is called Johan Goes to Mexico. So let me put that up in our board. It's the next thing we're doing, right? Also, you might have caught on to the fact that I just showed you basically my living room and that there's a white wall behind this thing. Temporary blackboard wallpaper. It works and it's awesome. Johan goes Mexico. That's the protagonist of this part of the story. His name's Johan. Johan was a boy at the time. He went to Mexico to go get some tequila. Now recall, Johan was a boy. 
Um, so going to Mexico to get his tequila was maybe not the most legal way of doing it. However, Johan was adventurous. Johan was a boy, much like myself, who may have attempted to subvert the law every once in a while to get what he wants because it's a free world out there. Damn it. And we're going to experience it that way. That's my pal, Johan. I don't know if that appears. Oh, yeah, that actually looks pretty good on the board behind me. That's pretty good. More Than Awesome says, I mean, I had a Trinidad Sour today. That's a lot of Ango. Mind meld. Allow me to turn to page 42 of the Mezcal and Tequila book. It's this one. And on that page, it's going to give a, an interesting... It's going to give a description of this drink here, which may or may not um, describe a Trinidad Sour. Um, it does, actually. Johan goes to Mexico. A, a biography. No, just kidding. It was created by Josie Packer um, Drink in Boston in 2010. This cocktail, invented at the Boston Cocktail Bar Drink, is a mezcal riff on the Trinidad Sour. A modern cocktail classic that improbably calls for one and a half ounces or about 44 milliliters of Angostura bitters, an ingredient typically deployed in small dashes as an accent. In Packard's version, only half an ounce is called for. The lesser amount allows the mezcal's flavors to shine through. We combine everything in a cocktail shaker, filled with ice, shake until chilled, and then double strain into a coupe glass. There is no garnish for this cocktail. I would put this off to the side. You, more than awesome, you knew what was going on there. Anything that calls for more Angostura. The last time that I had uh, an Angostura bitter forward cocktail was one that was invented by uh, Greg Titian from How to Drink. And it was, I think, a Klingon drink. It was a Star Trek episode, I believe. And I think it was spe specifically Klingon. And that had like two ounces of Angostura bitters in it. And I tried it with a friend of mine at the time. I was not ready for it. This was like... Uh, probably two and a half years ago. This was relatively earlier on into my mixological endeavors here, so I was not prepared for it. However, Klingon blood wine, that was the one. Yeah, you got it, you got it. I will I will say, I don't think it was very well balanced, but that was my opinion at the time. I need to clean out my cocktail shaker because I don't have any more shakers over here. I only have two shakers. One kind of stinks and one's a good one. So uh, I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleaning. So bear with me really, real quick. I will give things a little bit of a uh, sanitization and we'll get right back into it. I'm not going very far. I'm still here, I'm still here. I just gotta, um, this, this shaker's strainer is no good anymore um, because it's got a bunch of orange peel pieces in it. Put this into the dirty bucket. The dirty bucket gets all the dirty pieces. Clean things off a little bit. We'll give it a little bit of a wipe. How do we do things around here? I keep things clean. That's clean, but wet. Giggity. Oop. And uh, I also like don't have a proper like water distribution system over here. I have like a Brita filter that, with nothing below it, voids its contents onto the floor. Um, which is probably not the best thing here. And if my landlord asks you why there's a stain on the floor, um, this is not the reason. It's because the varnish has been coming up since we moved in here. Take my thing over here and do a little bit of a polishing. El Diablo? El Diablo. I love an Ango heavy cocktail. Again, it's like, I love the taste of Angostura bitters. Um, it's just the fact that like there was so much into that. At the time, I didn't know enough about the flavor of Angostura bitters. I've had many, uh, many, uh, um, let's see, Manhattan at this point. Spy, I think, I, I, get, I get the Manhattan and Old Fashioned confused. I think you do Old Fashioned set bitters. Old Fashions. I guess I haven't had that many old fashions. You caught me on my lie. I don't use Angostura bitters for too, too, too much. But I've had it significantly more... I've had it more times in the last year and a half than I have in, I guess, two and a half years ago when I tried it for the first time. So, you get more experience with the flavors. That, that's the thing. There's so many different bottles that'll appear behind the bar. If you're familiar with every single one of them, you've probably been at it. You probably just drank or mixed or both a lot of cocktails. And that's the goal that we're trying to get ourselves towards. And eventually we will. I also love, oh, my screen just died. Okay. I also love me some Fernet or whatever. So, you know, oh, I know. Oh, I know. My screen just, okay. My screen went back for a moment and, ah, Chrome crashed. I see, I see. I still got my chat over here. I hate this computer. <laughs> 
hate this thing so much. Anyway, we cleaned off our cocktail shaker, which means we can get into it. Got time to get rid of that surface. It has been time to get rid of this surface for a long, long, long time. The problem is it works so well as like a makeshift like stream manager here. And I got all my stickers all over it. Like I can't just get rid of it yet. Anyway, here's a story about Johan, the dude who meant the Mexico. I need some mezcal, specifically an ounce and a half, or about 44 milliliters. This is like a common thing around here. It's another mezcal cocktail. I think for the most part, we haven't done as many tequila cocktails if we have mezcal cocktails. Just works out that way. And coincidentally, everything's coming from a single bottle of mezcal, which means I am going to have to go to the store and get some more at some point, which is totally fine by me. I'm fine with that. Old fashioned, time to, uh, yeah, old fashioned, like from Getaway Car, the Taylor Swift song. You could do a whole stream on just cocktails based on her songs. Ooh, that's an idea. I'll admit, I'm not much of a Taylor Swift person, but if it's a theme, if there could be a case made, we will do the research and we will conduct it properly. I need some ice in my shaker. I'm gonna go do that off camera. I'm gonna do this in the highest of moments. Hopefully. I'm getting a big cue, trust me, I am. I need little cues. Trust me, I am. Oh, where are you? Back here. There you go, there you go. I'm actually holding the small side of the shaker in my funnel over here. I'm using the funnel as a utility, as it was meant to be. And we're back. Hello. I got ice in the thing. Uh, one and a half ounces of the Mezcal, or about 44 milliliters. Fill that up. There we go. There we go. Oh, did I? For a moment, I thought I put it into the wrong side of the shaker, but really, there's no wrong side of the shaker. So long as you're consistent, I guess consistency is key. The next ingredient that you require is half an ounce of freshly squeezed lemon juice. And in this case, I don't have any lemon juice frozen, so I am actually going to freshly squeeze some lemon juice. You're going to take a lemon, you're going to take yourself a cutting board and cut that lemon safely, and then we're going to give it a squeeze. Perfect. Off the top of Annie's head, she mentions old fashions, whiskey, beer in plastic cups, whiskey, and more. Oh, wiki. Wiki and whiskey? And Patron. Patron. That's a type of tequila. Tequila. Tequila Mockingbird? Tequila Mockingbird. Tequila Mockingbird. We're going to take this citrus of the yellow variety and squeeze about half an ounce or about 15 milliliters out of it. Ooh, you are not giving that willingly. There we go. That's a good one. <laughs> nope, I just tried to type whiskey twice. Well, if, if you think about it, so actually you made me think. There's a cocktail out there called the Gin Ricky. It's a, a, a Ricky, and I think it's mostly lime juice and gin. Although I, I might be, I haven't made myself a Gin Ricky, so I might be incorrect about that. There might be some tonic in there or whatever. But like, that makes me think that a wiki, like a, like a whiskey Ricky, a wiki, it's probably a thing. It's got to be a thing. If it's not a thing, well, it's a thing now. We conceived of it here first at the bar with an X. X is silent. We just put the with an X there just to make sure that people know what's going on. Next, in addition to the squeezed lime juice, we'll need a half an ounce of Demerara syrup. I actually do have some simple syrup in my collection that was not necessarily on purpose made from Demerara sugar, but it was made from Demerara sugar, mostly because that was the only sugar that I had access to at the time. And it works. So I'm gonna go grab some of it. I don't remember which one is actually the Demerara sugar to be perfectly honest, so I'm gonna have to do a little bit of taste testing. I have this, this, and I have oh no. I'm stuck. There we go. And I got this one. Alright. I don't remember which syrup container is the Demerara syrup. So I think I gotta go in and try them and see which one's the Demerara syrup. All right, this one is very, very clear. I'm inclined to think it's probably not Demerara syrup. That smells interesting. Mm, that's definitely cane sugar. Not the white one, not the clear one. That's not it. I have... This container here, I'm curious. I'm not actually going to taste it because there's a really weird white residue on top. No. No. Just, just, just no. Nope, not even going to chance that. That looks weird. 
This one here. I think this might actually be the Demerara Shredder. It's very, very dark. And this container here, I don't think I've seen this container before. Is it even sugar? Sugar? What is this? That's wine. <laughs> That's not syrup at all. How did that get in my fridge? Hmm. Hmm. Well, now I know that that's in there. Um, let's see. Well, there's one more syrup container in there, so it must be the Demerara. Huh. This stuff I'm trashing. Uh, it's got some weird film growing on top of it. It's probably been in there for a little too long. Uh, but we've got this one. One more syrup. One more syrup. Actually, there's two more. There's two more syrups. Oh, that's pineapple juice. Let's get it. Cool. It's this one. It's gotta be this one. Not this one. All right. We found our Demerara syrup. We took a little bit of searching. A little bit of soul searching, too. We found it. Lo and behold, we found it. We need about... Was it half an ounce? Half an ounce. And this particular recipe says that the Demerara sugar is a one-to-one -one ratio. One volumetric unit of your Demerara sugar and one volumetric unit of the same volume of water. Half an ounce or about 15 milliliters. There we go. Got a nice dark color to it. Makes sense. I think the Demerara sugar that I used, do I still have it over here? Mm -hmm. I thought I did. I guess I don't anymore. Must be downstairs. Demerara sugar that I have. Oh, right there it is, there it is, there it is. Demerara sugar. What does it look like? This is my, my Demerara sugar. Very, very good. Very, very good. I got it from... I don't even know. It's from Mauritius, which I'm guessing is an area of the world. I've never had, I've never heard of Mauritius before. We're also going to need uh, the half an ounce of Angostura bitters. So that's the cool part about this, right? It's a, tr a Trinidad Sour uses a hefty amount of um, Angostura bitters. Usually, you don't put more than like a few dashes of Angostura bitters, and dashes really is a rather insignificant amount of liquid. Not completely insignificant, it does actually provide a rather noticeable flavor to the spirits that you add them to, but it's not like an ounce, or even a quarter of an ounce, or maybe it's like an eighth of an ounce, perhaps. But you usually don't add that in a significant amount that you would measure out in, let's say, a jigger, for instance. But a Trinidad Sour will use about an ounce and a half of that Angostura bitters. Uh, this one's calling for half an ounce. Usually, I got my Ango down here somewhere, um, and it looks like I do have enough of it. This container here comes with a bit of a special top to it, specifically for dashing. If I open this guy up... Yeah. Then there's this little container here. It will allow me to, if I pour it over, kind of do a little dashing motion. But I need a full half ounce of this. So let me take the take it off. You kind of see that it's kind of kind of staining my fingers a little bit there. I don't know if you can tell that. And I'll just pour in half an ounce of it. It is a very very red, very red tincture. Get that back up on top. Leave it for the dashing later. I also find that oftentimes there are other cocktail recipes that I have too that call for dashes of of spirit. And so I started realizing what I should be doing is I should be taking the dashers that I get from my bitters and cleaning them out, emptying them, and then I can use them for other cocktails and stuff. Smart, recyclable move. It's a good stuff. So we've got our mezcal in there, our lemon juice in there, our demerara syrup in there, and our Angostura bitters. All we need to do is shake it up and strain it into a coupe glass. I chilled one. I forgot to chill it this time. I apologize. But I don't think it's going to make too, too much of it. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. I'm not exactly sure. I can put it in the freezer for just a little bit of time, but I really don't think the amount of time that it takes for me to shake this thing up is going to be significant enough for it to really matter. So put the rest of my Angostura in there. Put my other jigger off to the side. Take a sip of my gun metal, which has been serving me well this evening so far. All right. We'll give things a shake. My ice has come to temperature. I'm going to strain out the water that's in there. There wasn't a lot of it this time. It's a, it's a pretty cold shaker. Combine together. And give that a shake. And then we'll strain it out into the goo glass. Cool. Here we go. It says, it says this 
shake it until chilled, about 15 seconds. It's a very, shaking is a very vigorous process anyway, so I guess the timing doesn't really matter, but like, just shake it till you're satisfied. Go for it. You chilled yet? Starting to make funny sounds. These are a good thing. The pressure is building on the inside. I can acutely feel the stickers on the side of my neck from the orange, like starting to like gripe at my skin now. It's just a part of the process. All right. Sounds like it's pretty good. There is no garnish for this one. So let's just get this camera angle properly set up for the libation below. There we go. Do a little bit of, there's no garnish on there. So let's just do Something like that. Move in a little bit. Ooh, very pretty. Again, the video artifacts a little bit. It's currently an open problem, but it's all right. It's probably gonna be, I'm guessing, it'll be a very nice red color. We'll see. It says that we should double strain it. Um, Although I'm not actually sure why we're double straining it, to be perfectly honest. There's no particulates in there. Um, I guess we're just trying to produce as little ice chips as possible, so we will double strain it. No ice chips. None. That is a very, very full coupe glass. That is perfect. Kind of looks like tomato sauce. Fan of that. Very, very cool. Toss that off to the side. Um, perfect. You're looking pretty good. Nice, nice, nice. This is called Johan Goes to Mexico. It's kind of a uh, kind of a mezcal rift, uh, riff, I say, on the um, on the Trinidad sour. It's got a lot of got a lot of Angostura bitters in there. Two Step says, "Yum! I just came, dude. Me too. Mind meld." And just came back. Congratulations. Welcome back, Two Step. We always appreciate your presence here. Woo! I'm spilling a little bit over here, so uh, that's on me. But Johan goes to Mexico. It was created at a bar called Drink by. Oh, uh, Josie Packard. It was created by Josie Packard. Got a lot of stuff in there. Indeed, indeed. And I spilled it a little bit, but it smells like the mezcal. There is a smokiness that is undeniably mezcal. And I think the odor that I'm getting is less of the smoke this time. I think the Angostura is kind of bringing its own smell to the table. It's more caustic, I would say. It's a little more, let's say, on the bitter side. Like if the smell can be bitter, kind of like a, like a paint varnish, I guess. Although I think that's a pretty bad comparison here. Things like a peaty scotch. I think is a lot more paint varnishy than something like, let's say, this Mezcal and the Angostura bitters that are in it as well. But it's still kind of that, like, I guess for lack of a better term, a bitter odor to it. Um, plus, there's a bunch of bitters in it. So um, this is probably going to taste dry, kind of cinnamony, maybe a bit of smoke there, and a bit of a sour thing there too. Let's go for it. Oh, wow. Wow. So, in the past, I've had cocktails that have even more Angostura bitters in it, up to, like, I think it was two full ounces for one particular recipe, and I wasn't a very big fan of it. I think the Angostura bitters were a little too powerful, they were a little too drying for me, and I just didn't really enjoy the rest of the drink around it. However, this has a lot more of a balance to it, and I feel like I'm using that term a lot today, and what I mean by a balance is, like, at least in my opinion, it's like you can kind of piece out the flavors that you're experiencing and they all serve if you had to like categorize them into a particular like subsection of purposes they all serve their own purpose i think there is a there's a piece of this the dryness from the angostura bitters that leaves your tongue a little bit sandpapery it's it's a drying feeling there it's not 
it, it's it's also a bitterness, but the bitterness part of the Angostura bitters has kind of faded away for the most part in favor of the sour component there, the more sweeter components that are coming about from the Demerara syrup that's in there. Um, and I guess if there's any sort of sweetness that at Mezcal, probably not as significant as the syrup that you put in there. But so the dryness of the Angostura bitters is sticking around as more of a texture, more so than a flavor, which is kind of cool. There is a lot of flavor coming from the Angostura bitters, and it's more that cinnamony bubblegum component, which tastes really, really cool combined with the more grainy, grassy, smoky components of the mezcal, and also that sort of like, um, I can't say that I can specifically piece out the demerara sugar aspect to it, as opposed to, let's say, a cane sugar. I can distinguish between the demerara and the cane sugar. There was a distinct difference there that I can't quite articulate, but that sweetness, I would say, is more of a, um, I don't want to say savory. I don't want to say deeper. Like when I say like a deeper sweetness, I think of something like like deep and caramelly, like a molasses. But it's not quite molasses. It's not. It's not as potent. It's just. It's just. I don't really know what the word is for it. Smoother, deep-ish, shallow, deep, superficial. I don't really know. I won't go down that too far. But it's nice. This is a very balanced thing too. And I also think it's kind of cool too. I don't know if you caught while I had the angle over here. I'll put it back there just for a split second. There's a cool little like um, like layer on top of this. This looks like really, really cool. I think that's coming from, what else did we put in there? We had the sugar in there. We had the lemon juice in there. We had the mezcal in there and the uh, Angostura. I think maybe that's coming from the Angostura's drying component. There might be some tannins in there that are kind of separating from the rest of the cocktail drink itself. I'm not exactly sure, but it's got a cool little like layering effect there. Kind of nice. And, I, I, did I mention the sour part of it? It's got a nice sourness to it. It's very good. It's not super, like, I'm not a huge fan of sour drinks. Uh, if it's too overpowering, it really, like, makes my, like, whole system act up and it gets a little gross. Um, but I can enjoy them pretty well. And this is a nice, there's a lot more, comparatively, dryness and sweetness than there is to the sourness, which is kind of just, like, existing there as another support beam. That's good. That is very, very good. It's a potent flavor, though. So it's not necessarily... I don't think this is for everybody. I'm making a little bit of a mess at my bar over here. So I'm going to get my... I have a floor towel back here, too, that I use for emergencies when things start to get, like, really, really dirty. And it's getting a little... It's getting kind of sticky back here. I'm going to do a little bit of a clean, clean... A queen... A queen clean? Clean clean? Who's the clean queen? I'm the queen clean. Clean king, queen, royalty, hierarchy, whatever. That was pretty good. That was called the Johan Goes to Mexico, a kind of mezcal riff on the Trinidad Sour. I don't know who Johan is, um, and I guess this journey to Mexico is significant because, like, mezcal and stuff makes sense. Um, but I guess we won't pry into Johan's life any further. The chapter of Johan's life where he went to Mexico was short, sweet, a bit dry, and a little sour. And he moved on to greener pastures. Catch us in the next installment of Johan Goes to Silicon Valley, where he pushes himself way too hard, burns out in about two months, and realizes that he's out of money and has no way to leave. And so he becomes a gigolo. Who knew? Anyway, that's the next chapter in Johan's journey. I, on the other hand, have my own journey that I will be getting to. And that journey involves one more cocktail. And it's a little bit of a throwback. A throwback, I say... Not really. Throwback is in like, chug it all back. No, just kidding. So I, at the very, very beginning of the stream, um, what I did was, I'm gonna put this over in the, this is a good cocktail, but I'm gonna put it over here just so I have like a more even spread of everything. Um, but the very, the very, very first thing that I did in the stream is I took some jalapeno peppers and I chopped them up into slices and I put them into some of my Patron that I had, the Reposada Tequila. And I did this because there's a spicy cocktail stream, a spicy spirit stream, if you will, that is coming up next week on Wednesday. It's like the first time in a while that I actually know what's happening next week. I'm very confident on it too. It's going to be, it's going to be spicy. We're going to have a couple of community members on there as well. It's going to be a blast. I've we're still in the planning process, so it should be kind of fun. Um, but so in preparation for that, I did a little bit of infusion that happens here. I have this bottle of 
jalapeno infused tequila that has been sitting at the bottom of the bar for evidently about two and a half hours now. It's not as infused as it could be. However, it definitely has a good proponent of the jalapenos. When I looked up, when I did a little bit of research of like how long you should be infusing jalapeno peppers specifically in tequila, it said about two to three hours depending on your spice level. I plan on continuing to let this infuse until next week because as advantage would apply, um, as the advantage would be, I'm probably gonna forget about it until then, and then realize, ooh, I'm gonna use this in a cocktail recipe. So, because I noticed jalapeno infused tequila appear a lot in some of the recipes that we're uh, that we're kind of planning for, so we figured to make it here. There was plenty of extra time, and we could put it on camera so that everybody gets to enjoy the fun. But I wanted to use this to try to see how it tastes in its two to three hour form to see what kind of spice I get from that because uh, I'm actually very very curious. So I have one more cocktail that I plan on covering this evening. It's we've, There's been a lot this time. Usually there's not this many cocktails but if we're feeling good about it and this has been very fun so far. I'm having a, an absolute blast with it so I thank you all for joining me for it and experiencing. There's been a couple of changes around here that you may have noticed. Some otherwise we live in the fun of it. We see how it goes and we continue on from there. Um, but this recipe is quite simply called the jalapeno margarita. And I'm actually doing it a little bit differently. It comes from a book that I have over here that I will showcase to the crowd. I get my angle set up here. Hi, everybody. It's my torso. It's called The Power of Positive Drinking. And it's actually a coloring book. If you notice on the inside, different pages are aligned on one side with recipes and a set of coloring pages on the other side. It's actually pretty cool. I haven't colored in literally any parts of this book, um, but I will eventually, maybe. Uh, I like to do a lot of drawing stuff. I draw all the stuff on the boards over here. I don't do a lot of coloring, if I'm being perfectly honest. And on page... Ooh, where are you? Did I say what page it is? Oh, I didn't actually say what page it's on. Let's see, it's on the left-hand side. The jalapeno margarita is in here somewhere. Question is where? What page? What page? What page? Oh, there you are. Right before the sidecar, and right after the classic martini on the rocks, the jalapeno margarita is on page... There is. There are no page numbers in here. So, um, just go looking for it, I guess. Uh, fire meets ice with the jalapeno margarita with the zest of lime, the smoothness of agave, the heat of jalapeno, and the inhibition of tequila. This drink has it all. It calls for using a couple of slices of jalapeno, agave syrup, silver tequila, fresh lime juice, and a lime wedge, and you kind of muddle the jalapeno pieces, the slices, into the cocktail itself. However, we're changing it up a little bit. I don't want to muddle the piece of jalapeno there. Instead, I let the jalapenos infuse in this reposado tequila as opposed to the Blanco. And so we're going to cut out the whole muddling parts of it. You're probably going to miss... I, I feel like for the most part, you're going to like kind of... You're going to miss, I guess, some of the texture that the little bits of fibrousness in the pepper that would provide. You strain out most of it anyway, so you're not going to get like the seeds or the skin or anything in there. But instead, we're going to get a different component, a more... I guess in this case, a wet component because it's been infusing in liquid as opposed to what you would get normally. Um, I've never actually had. I've had a jalapeno margarita before at a restaurant, at a bar like um, up the street, or, a couple, or rather a few blocks over. And to be perfectly honest, it did not taste like jalapeno at all. It wasn't spicy. It kind of tasted like it was supposed to be like a Paloma or something. It might have had a little bit of spice to it. Anyway, um, I haven't been back to that location and I don't really go out drinking anyways because going out to drink is expensive. Um, just buy your own bottles. Make a bar. I got my bar for free. It just the 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 effort of getting here was <gasps> excuse me. The most painstaking part. Ooh, excuse me. So what we're gonna do is we're going to put everything together in a cocktail shaker. Again, I only have two. I'm gonna have to clean out the one that I used previously. Um, and we're gonna add instead of three or four slices of jalapeno pepper um and three ounces of silver tequila, instead what we're gonna do is we're gonna use I think it's going to be more spicy. So instead of doing three ounces, I think I want to do two ounces. Instead of half an ounce of the agave syrup, I'm going to bump that up to a single ounce and we'll keep with the one ounce of fresh lime juice and you use a lime wedge there. I actually don't have any limes over here. I didn't go to the store specifically to buy limes in general. So I'm going to take a little bit of a creative liberty and I'm going to put on the edge, I'm going to garnish it with some extra jalapeno slices that I put on the side. So. 
I am going to, real quick, clean off the other cocktail shaker that I have. I'm on the search for more. I love the idea of everything, every utensil that I use behind the bar to kind of have like a bit of a story behind it. So I usually don't go out of my way to like just buy things on Amazon because I, I feel like I need another one. I like to see if I can explore and pretty much any gift shop I go into, I'm like, ooh, do you sell bar spoons? Do you spell, sell jiggers? Do you sell cocktail shakers or strainers or otherwise? And every once in a while, I hit a good spot, but I haven't found any good like shakers recently that aren't like like a um a, um I don't remember what the shakers are um what the proper name for the shakers but the, the little strainer on top of it. I like Boston shakers. They're basically just two metal cups put together. I'm a big fan of those. If anybody have recommendations where to go, I'm based in Philadelphia. I'd love to pop there and like pop into their shops and find it. And I'm sure the thrift stores have them too. So I'm gonna clean off my uh, shaker over here. We'll do one more cocktail and that'll be it. Do a little bit of cleanup. Over here. Just for a little bit of context, just the housekeeping of things, just for reference, I like to mix cocktails every Wednesday on this channel here at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. This is just the normal sales pitch of it. If sales pitches aren't your thing and you don't like me talking about the content that I'm making here, then feel free to plug your ears for a little bit or um, find other ways of keeping that stuff, um, I guess, or within your realm of reference. There's no pressure to pop on next time. If you're just a traveler and you're falling on through here and you just kind of stumbled upon it, cool. Thanks for allowing serendipity to allow us to, to exist within the same mutual space. I think it's an honor. Um, but if this is not your thing and you just feel like you're passing through, absolutely no problem. You respect that too. Honestly, for the most part, if this was a real bar, for the most part, I feel like not many people are just going to like pop in and become regulars. Like for the most part, people pop in, they move on, and um, that's how things are. And for the most part, I think for the mo uh, like this is kind of just what those streams are. And if anybody expects anything different, especially like if you come from like a, like a bartending scene, I don't know. I feel like the expectations are uh, potentially doomed to be unmet. That's the whole nature of it all. We're dealing with substances here. We're dealing with bar stuff here. So if you're just passing through, that's, it's like how D&D campaigns start. That's how a lot of like interesting encounters in life start. You just pop it. A man walks into a bar. A uh, woman walks into a bar. A person of a non-disclosed gender identity walks into a bar. And something happens. Or maybe nothing happens at all. But they make a couple of observations. I think that's kind of cool. In any case, so let's get things going over here. Our jalapeno margarita is going to start with... I need some ice in my shaker glass. And I need to write the cocktail uh, that we're doing up on the board. I'm still getting used to that. Jalapeno. No. Um, how are you spelling this? Margarita, not like the pizza. Mar. Gar. Uh, margarita? Margarita. Did I say margarita? I did not mean to say margarita. My goodness. Chow says, man walks into a bar. You'd think he would have ducked. <laughs> a man walks into a bar. He says, ouch. Of course. Duh. <laughs> I need some ice in that. So I'm going to go get that. More often than not, I don't usually go through all of my ice on the stream. And I will admit, I did not go through all of my ice this time, uh, which is which is all fine and dandy. I think the only time I really ran out of ice was during the, um, the stream that we did for 24 hours, raising money for thank for, um, for charity. That was cool. We actually like ran out of all the ice, which was uh, useful. I also drank, I think, a little too much. And I was a little tipsy during the rest of that stream. But it was a 24-hour stream, so there was plenty of time to sober up. We had a nice breakfast, too. The camera took a trip downstairs. It's kind of cool. There were some nice things that came out of that. Plus, we raised like over three, like a thousand dollars. That was like freaking awesome. It was awesome. Ch uh, also, oh, oh, Annie says, "Man, that hit his head. Man, that hit his head." Also needs ice. Specifically, one large cube um, to, I guess, knock him out completely so he doesn't feel any more pain, and then two little cubes for the actual healing and, and soothing properties. We're not trying to like, like, like soothe this man's pain. We're trying to just like knock him out completely. Like if he's already halfway there, he's kind of like, "Oh, my head," just like. Get him out of here. Get out of here, you're drunk. So um, the recipe usually calls, this particular recipe calls for three or four slices of jalapeno, half an ounce or about 15 milliliters of agave syrup, three ounces or about 
I guess that's probably about 88 milliliters of silver tequila, an ounce or 30 milliliters of fresh lime juice, and a single lime wedge. I'm not using jalapeno slices and silver tequila. I'm using reposado tequila infused with jalapeno peppers, and there's quite a few in there. So I'm gonna drop that down to two ounces. I'm gonna increase the agave syrup up to a single ounce because it's kind of viscous. A little bit's gonna be lost anyways. Um, and I'm also gonna, I'm gonna keep the one ounce of the fresh lime juice, and instead of using a lime wedge, I'm gonna garnish with some jalapeno peppers, which I have a couple of slices off that are, I saved during the beginning part of the stream. So that's what we'll go with. Um, uh, it doesn't say, it's a straight into a cocktail glass. It's a margarita. So I'm gonna put it in a margarita glass. I got a couple around here. They're kind of big, so it's probably gonna be a little too big for the britches. Um, it'll be fine. It'll be okay. In any case, let me take my um, take my measure and majigger. I'm gonna take two ounces of reposado tequila that has had some jalapeno peppers kind of sitting in it throughout the entire stream so far. How spicy is it? I'm not exactly sure. I've never actually tried this. This is the first time I've made jalapeno infused anything on at, at the at the bar with an X. It smells super duper peppery. I'm gonna just give a, a little a little lick. A little bit on my tongue. That is potently spicy. I like that. And I'm putting two full ounces of that in here. Will I survive? Probably. Oop, let's make sure that I get it over top. I put a little, all right. One of the little pepper wedges found its way into my measuring majigger. I'm gonna take you out. Ooh, there's still more spice that I wanna collect from you. There we go. I don't know what I just got myself into. There's still plenty more. This will make an appearance next week at the bar with the next as well. Spicy, spicy boys. Spicy, spicy, spicy boys. Uh, the next thing that we'll add is a whole ounce of agave syrup. I hope I have it up here. Yes, I do. There's my agave syrup sitting off to the side, right next to the funnel. Um, for the most part, um, I kind of increased the... Uh, the, the measure here, the agave syrup, mostly because it's it reminds me a lot of honey. It's kind of viscous. A little bit kind of gets stuck in the jigger anyway, so not all of it is going to necessarily make it out there. Um, I have a little bit of the Angostura still in this jigger over here, so I'm going to get a little bit of a clean. I'll take that. It's just water. Mm. Kind of a kind of a sp spicy sour water. I'm going to put a whole ounce of the agave syrup in there. Agave syrup is less viscous than honey, it flows more easily, so more of that is gonna go in there. Uh, but I wanna increase, increase the sweetness because I got a strange feeling that this is gonna be a very, very spicy bout. So I'm preparing myself for it. As I was reading through some of my other cocktail books the other day, the unique thing about agave syrup is that it's most, the, the majority sugar in there, I believe is fructose, as opposed to most other syrups where I think the majority is like sucrose or glucose. So it's kinda unique. So if you're specifically looking for fructose, you probably already know, if I'm quoting this correctly, it comes from agave syrup. It's got a different type of sweetness, different chemical properties. It's all sugar, baby. All sugar, baby. We're also gonna need an ounce or about 30 milliliters of lime juice. Um, I'm gonna be using the lime juice that I've been kind of whittling away at. Um, I had it freezer um, and, then I, and then I thought it specifically for this stream. Um, from what I've been told, Lime juice or lemon juice or citrus juice in general, if you freeze it and you de-thaw it, there's not really anything that gets lost in the flavor of it all. So you can kind of squeeze your limes, um, squeeze your limes, you take as much of it as you need, you freeze the rest of it, bring it back the next week or at the next session of whatever bar thing that you do, and you should be okay. However, I don't know. If there's some science out there that proves me otherwise, I must know. Somebody must inform me at some point. Otherwise, I will surely, I will slowly but surely stay ignorant forever. And I think that's it. We add our agave syrup, we add our tequila, we add our lime juice, and we give this a shake. That's all we need. I am looking forward. This is kind of like a, it's a bit of a teaser. The teaser to what we'll be getting ourselves into next week, where the, um, the pepper, I guess, the pepper of poison, if you will, is going to be a Carolina Reaper. And other things too. I believe we've got. I believe Jalap. Uh, I believe Jalapeno is uh, making an appearance. I think Habanero is also making an appearance, and Riapar is um Riapar is also making an appearance. K 
Carolina Riaper. Anyways, um, I'm going to strain out some of the water. My ice is kind of um, out of temperature. There's quite a bit in there, actually. We'll give it a shake. We'll pour it into a margarita glass, which I will grab. It's a very large... I don't have any small margarita glasses, although I don't think they... Um, I don't think they come small. Honestly, too, it's a margarita. Like, I feel like I need to rim the glass with something. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna rim the glass with something. Before I shake this up, I just bought some tahine. Well, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I just bought some tahine seasoning the other day, and um, I'm gonna put this on this, because I've always wanted to try it. So, let me go grab that. I need a little bowl to actually do put my little tahini thing in and I think I have that on the side here somewhere. I haven't used it in a while, so I might have misplaced it. And I think I actually did. So uh, this is gonna be a little bit messy. I'm gonna do it anyways. I do have a plate off to the side. Actually, actually, I do have a plate. Hold up, hold up, we're gonna make this work. I put this here, I bring this over. I had a plate of cookies left over from work. So I'm going to merely take this down. I'm gonna grab my agave syrup. I am going to kind of take this agave syrup, kind of rim it around my glass here on the side. I don't want the whole thing being like completely overtaken, but just enough to get bits of that seasoning to really stick to the side of my margarita glass. Ah, she's kind of dripping, but that's that's okay. Oh, that's that's a, ooh, she's very drippy. That's all right. In any case, um, as she dripping. As she do, I'm gonna take this tahini saw of this tahini seasoning. I've this bottle is kind of interesting, actually. Let me bring my other angle over here to show you all what's going on. I'm gonna do a little bit of a change over here. Here we go. I see there's some. Ooh, you're like, well, take a closer look at that margarita glass for a moment. It is it is dripping. Put that in the background. Oh, it's dripping all right. Um, but this tahini like container, I've never actually opened this before. Do I just something like pop it or something? I don't know how to open this thing. <laughs> oh, it looks like there's a little piece of I see. There's a tab you pull off, put it to the side, and then you can pop it open. There we go. Not too difficult. And I'm just going to put that kind of all over, all over my bowl here. I don't need too much of it. Actually, I can use as much of it as I want. I don't know how often I'm going to be using this. Um, Tahini seasoning anyway. Oh, it kind of got stuck. Oh, it's like kind of... Oh, it's really stuck in there. Wow, okay. It's really stuck in there. My goodness. There we go. I had to convince it to come out a little bit. Some people take a little convincing before they come out. There's no shame in that. Now kind of take the... Take the, the glass, I'm just going to put it into my bowl here, kind of like shake it around a little bit. Try to apply as much tahine to the side of this as possible. Somebody asked me earlier today, like, can you put tahine seasoning on like the side of like a margarita and stuff like that? I don't remember who it was that asked it, um, but excellent. I specifically bought it the other day because I figured that we were going to get our hands a little dirty. And now, it's a little something like, like this. A little a little off center we're still kind of glitching with that camera angle but it's gonna be fine it's gonna be fine i'm not gonna use any of the rest of that anyways put your tequila whoa put your agave syrup away we have our glass we are going to or i guess i'm bringing the angle back because we're about to do a little bit of strainage but i'm gonna do it at a better angle now this time there we go there we go there's our glass. I'm going to put my book away so we got a little more contrast. Take my shaker. Do our thing. Give it a little bit of a strain. Let's move that a little bit. I'm still getting used to this angle. What is the best way to do it? Move it back. A little bit forward. There we go. That looks good. That off the side. This is smelling really tequila-y. I can really taste that. I can really smell that. I can really, really smell that. Okay. And we'll strain that over top. I don't think it needs to be strained over ice, uh, although this is a large margarita container. I don't think it's gonna get all the way up to the top. Um, and it did not. And I did 
was definitely not planning to make myself a double of this, so I think, I think I'm gonna be okay. Oh, actually, I just realized that's not, I don't think I actually shook this. That agave syrup is not very well incorporated. I think I actually forgot to shake it. <clears throat> silly, silly me. Let's put that back in the shaker container. Yeah, I definitely did not. Wow. I forgot to shake it. My goodness. I got so caught up in the process. I need to add a little more agave syrup to that. Wow. I kind of screwed that one up. That's okay. I saw the agave syrup like hanging on the bottom. I was like, wait a minute. That's, that's weird. That didn't mix at all. That's okay. We make mistakes every once in a while. Put it together, give it a shake, and then strain it. There we go. The seal has yet to be broken. Now we will give it a strain as it kind of makes its little like dying swan song over there. Now we will conduct the strainage. I will put this back where it was in its rightful place. There we go. And we'll do it right this time. As somebody else once said before me, um, we'll do it live. We'll, we'll do it live. <laughs> it's a little messy over here, but honestly, I think it's okay. Squeaky, squeaky, squeaky. Or that over top. There we go, that looks incorporated. There's air in there. There's no weird bits of agave syrup at the bottom. That's great. I think that's much better. I'll put those into the, the bin. I don't need that anymore. And the next thing I'll need is I have some jalapeno slices over here that I chopped off during the beginning of the stream. And I will garnish the side of the glass with them. One second, one second. Here we go. Just a little couple of jalapeno slices. Ain't she beautiful? I'm inclined to think she is. My fingers are a mess. I'm gonna wipe them off real quick um, so that I don't feel like I should like put them on my face because there's definitely jalapeno on there and I don't wanna go blind. That would not be very good. Take the obligatory Instagram photo. We always have to, you gotta do it. I gotta do it. Although, to be perfectly honest, I think the angle, I think this cocktail angle looks better than the images that I take on my phone now. It's actually quite incredible. I'm down with that. Let's switch back. Let's see how it tastes. I'm going to push this off to the side. I don't think I'll be needing that anymore this evening. Got a lot of leverage out of that. We really got to put that together this weekend. This was, still is, a, very, a rather messy, messily presented jalapeno margarita. We took a little liberty, a couple of liberties with it, but really for like a for like a, a recipe like a margarita or something a little more classic, like the fact that we change it up a little bit to suit our own needs, it's just like a mixological like inevitability. It's gonna wind up happening. I didn't want to crush up a bunch of jalapeno peppers. I had some infusing, so we go with that. It smells really peppery. And like, I think the last time I smelled something this peppery was, I think it was like a Huevos Rancheros like omelet or something at IHOP that my buddy and I got, like dick out some jalapeno peppers on the side. We didn't know whether or not they were specifically jalapenos or not. And we bit them. They were. We were able to handle it. Although I struggled a little bit with it. And I have to seen seasoning on the outside, which I've never had before. That's like, ooh. Tahine seasoning has like a sour, Spicy, salty component to that. That is interesting. I just bought that at the store the other day. Go figure, because I knew we were doing tequila stuff, and I thought this might be, if we do a margarita, I gotta try it. Oh my goodness, wow. Whew. That's spicy. There is a lot going on there. So, the, t the, the flavor of the tahini, that kind of salty, spicy sourness, didn't really hit me toward the end, despite the fact that it's literally on the rim of the glass. But there is a really, really spicy aspect, obviously, to the jalapeno infused tequila in there. That kind of, I knew that was gonna happen, but it still kind of caught me off guard because we're, we're like a few drinks in so far, and this is the last drink that I'm doing this evening after like one, two, three, four, five, six six of them so this is a little ooh, 
it's really like kind of clearing up my sinuses and stuff. I really want to see if there was a like a piece of the cussy. There was there was lime in there. I can taste the sourness, not the sourness that's coming from the tahini seasoning. I'm gonna get actually. I'm gonna go back in there again at the same place that I sipped the first time to get less of the tahini and more of the margarita itself. Hmm. Another thing that I described earlier, I'm not a big fan of spice that occurs without flavor. Like, things like really, really spicy peppers, in my opinion, I need a little water over here, um, they exist with a lot of spice, with a relatively lower amount of flavor. Jalapeno has a flavor to it. Like, a, aside from the spiciness, it has a particular pepper flavor to it that's actually it's it's kind of it's kind of nice peppers to me have a very nice crunch to them they have a little bit of a sweetness to them like a very very like grassy sweetness not like oh man it tastes like i'm biting into a fruit um you are technically because i think technically peppers are fruits but like not not sweet it's not sweet um but there is a sort of a sweetness there like a quasi sweetness and i taste that i can taste the jalapeno part of the margarita it's a margarita so it's got your tequila in there and it's got your lime juice in there the sourness of the lime is kind of, I want to say it's kind of balancing out the spicy, but the spiciness of the jalapeno exists separately than everything else about the margarita itself. The sweetness is coming through from that agave syrup. I, I think I, I changed up the recipe. I put a little bit more in there because I wanted to balance out the, sour, the, the spiciness a little bit, but the spiciness is a separate component entirely. Unlike the... Um, the cocoa smoke cocktail that we made earlier where the spiciness kind of melded together with everything else going on there in this case it's separate it's completely distinct from everything else this is basically like a margarita that you made with a little more sweetness and tahini seasoning on the side and it's spicy and it kind of clears your sinuses which like to some is probably a pretty good thing i kind of like it it's a it's a particular flavor that i haven't had in a cocktail. I, i've never i have never Drankin, I think is the right word. I've never drank a spirit, like a cocktail like this before. Because I don't think I've ever had actually had anything that was like that strongly infused with a very spicy pepper. Um, I plan to explore that more. Excuse me. Getting the spicy sour burps from this. Um, I plan to explore that more a bit next week. Uh, but for now, it's kind of all I got. That's all the cocktails that I've done this evening. That was a lot more than I usually do. About a three-hour stream there. No problem. We had a fun time with it. So what I'll do as we kind of wrap things up over here is I'll kind of go back through things and give a little info of what we covered. And then we'll give things an end here. The first thing that I kind of made before kind of going into kind of some tips, I guess kind of fun facts about tequila and mezcal was a mockingbird. It's, it's a pun. It's one of my favorite cocktails because the name of it is a pun. It uses tequila creme de menthe, and lime juice, tequila, mockingbird, tequila, mockingbird. I'm not going to say that any more times. Um, I changed it up a little bit. Um, I, did a, I, I, I did a little bit of a riff on the recipe that I'm used to, and I wasn't very happy with it. So I put it to the side. Did a little bit of history on mezcal and tequila itself, specifically from this book called Mezcal and Tequila Cocktails by Robert Simonson. It's a great book. I would recommend you picking it up if you find it, if you're into tequila and mezcal cocktails. There's a lot more than what I was able to cover here. I think I covered only three or four cocktails in the book, and there's at least two dozen of them in there. They're all really good. Um, if I could prepare for all of them, I probably wouldn't. The stream would literally never end, and I'd be very, very drunk, so... What we did afterwards uh, was we did a cocktail called Gunmetal Blue, uh, which had quite a few things in it. I think I'm trying to like do a memory recall here where I try to remember the exact recipe of every single drink that happened here. I don't exact, I'm not gonna be able to do that. Um, however, what I do wind up doing is there's a VOD channel. Everything that comes out after this is gonna be in the description. There's gonna be chapters and stuff that give you all the recipes and stuff. I will also post every single recipe that we call that we covered here as well on our Discord server as well in the hashtag drinks channel, which all this stuff will wind up uh, ending up there. 
Um, but this other cocktail here was called Gunmetal Blue. It used blue curacao and some mezcal, used peach brandy, I believe some lime juice and cinnamon syrup in there. And it was lovely. This was the cocktail that I was drinking more or less throughout the entire endeavor. But as we, as I kind of get more and more cocktails into my system, I tend to stop drinking the one that I put aside for myself. Um, I should definitely drink more water than we have over here. Uh, but I get very distracted. It's a, it's tough when you're kind of really focusing on the things happening in front of you. Um, but after Gunmetal Blue, we went to this cocktail over here. Um, I'm spidering these glass, I'm putting my fingers over top of it. If I was serving this to anybody, I wouldn't be doing the same thing. Called Cocoa Smoke, and Cocoa Smoke took mezcal, creme de caco, and ooh, creme de caco, mezcal, and ancho chili liqueur, specifically ancho reyes, and combined chocolate smoke and spice in a way that really really went well together you also put three dashes of uh chocolate bitters in there and i know i used woodford reserve for that it's good it's really really good it is probably the most balanced cocktail that was covered this evening in the sense that every flavor had its place they melded together very very well and it creates a cocktail that really has a flavor all its own um despite the fact that the constituents were rather separate from each other it was really really good after Cocoa Smoke, we created this little number over here called The Cinnamon Girl from a website called Curiata. It takes tequila, uh, muddled up orange slices, uh, and combines that with a couple other things I can't quite remember, um, but it included cinnamon syrup. That's what they call it, The Cinnamon Girl. And like, interestingly enough, the website said to put it in a rocks glass, but they provided a picture that was in a wine glass, so we decided to take the flare approach, and I put it in a little tangled theme uh, wine glass that we have over here. It's cute. It's really good. It's like very, very, it's, it's mellow. I think it hides the tequila very well. Um, and it's very, very orangey. It kind of reminds me like a mimosa, but like there's no bubbliness in there. Um, mostly just because of how much fresh orange juice was in there. Cause like when you take three slices of orange and you really muddle that thing up, it's a lot of juice and a little bit of oil and it showed and it was very, very good. Um, second to last, the penultimate cocktail was this one that's sticking to its coaster called Johan Goes to Mexico. It's kind of a riff on the Trinidad Sour, which usually would use an ounce and a half of Angostura bitters as opposed to like the two to three dashes you would usually apply to cocktails, and instead swaps out the components with mezcal, kind of dials back on the Angostura a little bit, and adds back in. I think there was it was either lemon juice or um, lime juice there. I think it was the lemon juice for that one. Um, but it's like a Trinidad Sour, but it uses mezcal instead of rum i believe a trinidad sour usually uses and that's good that's good i've had cocktails before that use a lot more angostura bitters and i think i'm slowly but surely warming my way up to it but it had a nice cinnamony note to it it had almost like a bubble gummy note to it and the smoke of the mezcal melded well uh very very well with everything else going on in there and plus there was a sourness there that was also very very balanced i would say um the cocoa smoke i think was better balanced in the sense that it kind of made a flavor all its own but johan goes to mexico was also very good that one was also from the mezcal and tequila cocktails book as well and then at the very very beginning i just kind of took some slices of jalapeno and i put it into some reposada tequila i let it sit for a while and we made a margarita out of it which used the um, jalapeno infused tequila it used lime juice it used agave syrup and some tahini seasoning on the outside garnish it instead of a lime wedge because i don't have any limes on me right now i've been using some lime juice that i recycling from previous episodes and stuff i put some jalapeno wedges on it which are sitting there menacingly and that's all i got that was every single cocktail that we covered this evening the theme was mezcal and tequila i hope we followed through on that i think for the most part we uh we kept ourselves uh pretty in line there but this was very fun i enjoyed it very much and i've got a bit of I've got a bit of cocktail on my body and a lot of cleanup to do i think i'm like i'm gonna probably do a little bit of cleanup after this maybe hang in the discord server for a little bit but i'm kind of tired so maybe Maybe I'll keep things quiet this evening. I'm not exactly sure. That's all I have, everybody. Thank you so much for coming along. I really, really do appreciate it. This is the ending screen. This is the screen that you see before we officially end things off over here. Uh, thank you for coming to the bar with an X. I hope you enjoyed these cocktails. If you enjoyed them and you liked them, follows are free, technically. But like, if you're just passing through, that's totally cool, too. It's totally your prerogative. We do these every Wednesday at 8 o'clock p.m. I'll have some friends over next week as well to really, really dive deep into the spicier components of stuff out there. It's still in the works, and I think it might be painful and entertaining.
So stick around if you'd like to. In any case, may you all have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your night if the moon is up and about where you guys are. If the sun is shining and you're starting off your day, might I suggest starting off your day with something jalapeno infused? Um, it'll clear your sinuses and maybe give you energy or send you to the hospital. Not really sure, honestly. This has been fun. This has been great. Burb, 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 everybody. No matter where you are, time zone or otherwise, I appreciate your presence. And until the next time that we meet, if we ever may do so, cheers and goodbye till then, y'all. Bye.